Stadium here in Pittsburgh, the home of the Pittsburgh Diamonds. Diamonds getting set to play the final game of the 2017 campaign as they take on the front-running Sonoma Stoppers. Diamonds coming in on a sour note. Uh, they dropped eight in a row now, and they are 15 and 23 here in the second half as the orange-cladded Diamonds take the field in their orange jerseys and their white pants. Travis Blackley will get the start here for Pittsburgh tonight as they try to end this campaign with a victory. And uh, the Sonoma Stoppers, well, they are in the championship game. If, if we have one, now the situation is this, that the if the Diamonds are able to trip up the Stoppers and Vallejo is able to win against um, uh, San Rafael, then Vallejo would also be playing in the championship game if both teams win. That's uh, Vallejo and uh, Sonoma. And if both teams lost, they finish in a tie by virtue of having a better head-to-head -head record between those two teams. Vallejo would actually win the second half and be in the championship game. As you see the numbers on Travis Blackley there, 2-4, four, 432 ERA, 58 and a third innings pitch, 53 hits, 22 walks, 64 strikeouts. Reading to those joining us on Mixler.com. So in those scenarios, folks, we would have a championship game if uh, Vallejo loses, Sonoma wins, Sonoma wins the second half outright, and they would be the 2017 champions of the Pacific Association, and that would make them back-to-back -back winners. They were winners last year in 2016. So we are ready for baseball now, and here is that Stompers starting lineup. Matt Hibbert, he's in center field. He will lead it off. Derek Fox is the shortstop. He bats second. Joel Carranza, the DH tonight. He's in the third spot. Scott David, the cleanup man. He's at first base. Brendan Metzger had a great night defensively last night in left field. He's in the ball game again. Daniel Comstock gets the start behind the plate. Masa Miyadera at third. Yuki Yasuda at second. Matt Lococo added to the roster a little while ago coming over from San Rafael. He is uh, in the lineup at uh, right field tonight. And this uh, crew will take on Travis Blackley, and the first pitch is in there for a strike. And they count nothing in one. Did I say Lococo was with San Rafael? He's been, now he's been with a stopper. Here's Matt Hibbert, 286, five home runs, 41 RBIs. Matt, a big part of the success of the stoppers the last couple of years as they continue to roll along and trying to keep it going here. Swing, this one lifted in the air, right field. Bautista is there, drifting back toward the warning track, reaches up and makes the catch. Here is the Diamonds' defensive alignment. Marta Carreno, Wallace, Bautista, who you just saw, it's left to right in the outfield. Wagner, Mello, left side of the infield. B.J. Gwynn at second. Vinny Galetti is at first base tonight. Kevin Farley behind the plate. He threw out a runner trying to steal last night. That was Matt Hibbert. And uh, the aforementioned left-hander, Travis Blackley, major former major with the Giants and the A's. The Australian is out there. And apparently his uh, map quest got a little mixed up yesterday. Here's the pitch, and that one high, actually in there for a strike to Derek Fox. Matt actually went to the game last night. He just went to the wrong ballpark. But he gets it right tonight, and he gets the start. Here's Derek Fox, 274, a home run. 16 RBIs for the switch hitter, takes inside for a ball. Nice night for Derek last night, and he's really had a hot series. I believe it's six RBIs in the two games, the first two games of this series for Derek Fox. Switch hitting shortstop, batting from the right side against the left-hander. And the 1-1 pitch, that is low and outside for a ball. And the count, two balls and one strike to Derek Fox to be followed by tonight's designated hitter for Sonoma, Joel Carranza. Here's a good look at Travis. Living out in Brentwood. Here's the pitch, swinging a foul back. And the count goes two balls and two strikes. So Diamond's trying to get off the snide, folks. It's been a tough one since uh, they had that uh, series in Vallejo, which did not go to their liking. Lost all three games there. And by virtue of that, uh, that last game when they lost, that really eliminated him from the 
the chase here in the second half. That one is inside the count, three balls and two strikes. If they had won that third game of that uh, Vallejo series, that uh, would have left them three back with six to go. Still would have been alive at the last uh, six games, but uh, didn't work out that way. Swing and a foul back to the screen. Hits the post on the fence here. And the count remains three and two to Derek Fox. Here you take a look at the Sonoma dugout. Sonoma in gray tonight for those of you on Mixler listening, listening in. And the payoff pitch, swinging a foul back to the screen. The count remains three and two. And it's Rotacare night. The Rotarians are here serving a tri-tip dinner. And had a chance to interview our public address announcer, Paula McAvoy, who's so very much involved with the Rotarians and to hear about all the wonderful things they do for people in need. Derek Fox waits, another 3-2 pitch to him, swing, and he pops this one up foul again, and he and Blackley have got a battle going here with one out and nobody aboard here in the top of the first inning. Take a look at Miyoshi down there at third base, the skipper of this club, and well, they've had the magic going the last couple of years, and they keep it going for at least one more ball game and possibly two. Three, two pitch, swing, and this one is lined out to second base and it's gonna be passed. B.J. Gwynn over there and into right center field for a base hit. Well, B.J. looked like he was in pretty good position. Not uh, quite able to make the play there. Home plate umpire is Danny Speck tonight. Mark Beller is in the field. So a man on a base hit for Fox. And uh, that gets things started here in the first inning for the Stompers. That'll bring up Joel Carranza. 276, 13 home runs, 62 RBIs for Joel. Very much alive in that race for the, the lead in the RBI category in the association. And of course, Joel last year's MVP. Having an, another good season for him, but uh, three guys that... Uh, Certainly above him in that race this year. And one of them is on the field tonight for the Diamonds. Of course, is Vinny Galetti over there at first base. This pitch is outside, one ball and no strikes. Vinny, by virtue of the batting average that's been so high for most of the seasons, went up high ball two, two balls and no strikes. Vinny hitting over 400 through that first month plus, and then has seen it dwindle since then, but has gone down grudgingly. And it's 360 coming into tonight's ball game. Here's another throw back over to first base. And of course, Tillman Pugh playing tonight in the uh, Vallejo San Rafael game, and Tillman putting up wonderful numbers as well. Jake Taylor in San Rafael. Here's Travis Blackley. Had a look at uh, his move over to first base, which, was, which is among the best in the league, if not the best move to first base in the league. Here's one popped up on the infield. Here comes Galetti coming in from first base, and it's going to be the catcher, Farley. He drops it, but they're going to get the force at second base anyway. And that usually would look like an infield fly roll, I thought. Well, that was clearly an infield fly situation there. I'm a little miffed as to why that wasn't caught, or that uh, that wasn't called, rather. So, in any event, <laughs> so Joel Carranza, he pops into the fielder's choice. And here's Scott David now. And the pitch to the left-hander is in there for a strike. And let's say welcome, let's welcome the people joining us now on Mixler. I forgot to hit the start button, but now we're going. So Diamonds Baseball coming to you from Comcast 24, AT&T 99, streaming on the City of Pittsburgh's website and also on Mixler.com. This next pitch way up high for a ball, and the count one ball and one strike. 
So Hibbert flew out to center field, or actually right uh, right field. Derek Fox, a base hit. Joel Carranza popped into a fielder's choice. And now here's Scott David, a ball and a strike. 1-1 one, one pitch to Scott, swing and a miss, and the count goes to one and two. The Diamonds baseball, very exciting season this year. Didn't end certainly the way the Diamonds wanted to, but they played a lot of very exciting games. And I'm remembering J.J. Wagner's walk-off home run, a three-run shot as we were hitting the tail end of that first half when the Diamonds were making a run at these stoppers. 1-2 pitch, and that is up high for a ball. And they count two balls and two strikes to Scott David. So two down here for Scott David, runner at first base. And Blackley, a couple of starts ago, was dazzling in a game against San Rafael. I believe that was his last start, the 2-2 pitch. Here it is, swung on, and that is lined in the left field. That is gonna be a base hit. So Scott David reaches to keep the inning alive, and here's Brendan Metzger. You know, Metzger was, talk about dazzling, he was that. Last night, you look at the numbers, very impressive for Brendan. 311, seven home runs, 39 RBIs. And last night, he made three fantastic plays, robbing the Diamonds of base hits on three separate occasions. And a couple of times, he was going, coming in on the ball and having to make a dive. He was just fantastic in the field yesterday. Here's the pitch to Brendan, swing, and he fouls this one back. And the count, no balls and one strike. When you talk about uh, the Admirals and what a turnaround they've made, I told you they're 23 and 15 and have a chance to win the title here this year. Looking ahead to a possible championship game. They've, if they win tonight, they're in the championship game. Here's the pitch, and that is going to be low. Gets away, and the runners are going to move up. Carranza down to third. Scott David down to second. And that's the first wild pitch of the evening. Here's a look at Carranza down there at third base. Now for Vallejo, finished dead last in the first half, 12 and 27. And uh, so far here in the second half with one game left, 23 and 15. So you've heard that uh, old saying, what a difference a day makes. Well, what a difference a half makes for Vallejo, and it's been a combination of things. They certainly added some players. They've certainly gotten better pitching, and some of the guys that uh, are still around from the first half for them have simply played better. 1-1 one, one pitch, and Metzger swings and misses. That was a check swing by Brennan, clearly went around, and the count goes down to one ball and two strikes. So Blackley in a bit of a jam here. He does have two outs trying to get out of this one. The Diamonds the last couple of nights have not been able to get through the first couple of innings without trailing by several runs. Four runs a couple of nights ago, three runs last night. One, two pitch to Metzger and that's high ball two, two balls and two strikes. Blackley will look in, take a look at the runner, Scott David over there at second base. There's a good look from our center field camera. 22 pitches already in the inning for Travis Blackley, so they've extended him here in the first. And the uh, thing for the Diamonds is the, the bullpen has had its problems Starting pitching hasn't always been great, but for the most part, uh, 
We've had a lot of solid performances, but the bullpen has been shaky. The two balls, two strike count. Here it is, and that is a called strike three on the outside corner. So Blackley strands runners at second and third after half an inning. Here from Winter Chevrolet Stadium in Pittsburgh, it's the Stoppers nothing. Diamond's coming up. And back to Winter Chevrolet Stadium here in Pittsburgh. Diamond's getting set to take on Scott Plaza. And here is the lineup for your Pittsburgh Diamonds. Odomar Valdez in the DH spot tonight. He bats first. B.J. Gwynn is at second. He bats second. Vindy Galetti at uh, first base. He's in the third spot. Wes Wallace in the cleanup spot in center field. Gerald Bautista bats fifth. He's in right. Marta Carina bats sixth. He's in left. J.J. Wagner in the seventh spot. He's over there at third. Kevin Farley in the eighth spot. He is the catcher. Corey Mello is the shortstop. He bats ninth. And this uh, crew takes on Scott Plaza, the right-hander of the Sonoma Stompers. And there's Scott, four and two, 458, 74 and two thirds, 79 hits, 33 walks, 61 strikeouts. So Scott's turned in a nice uh, season here for the Stompers. Trying to give them a chance to win this thing outright here tonight. 282, four and 22 for Odomar Valdez as he takes in there for a strike. And the count, nothing and one. Scott Plaza, the right-hander, entering his second full season as a professional. First in Sonoma, here's a punt. Plaza off the mound to get it, throws over to first in time to get him. Good play by Scott Plaza getting off that mound in a hurry and getting the speedy Odomar Valdez who tried to bunt his way on. And that is how the bottom of the first gets underway. So Valdez out number one, tried to bunt, and that'll be, bring up a B.J. Gwynn. So Odomar out one to three. All right, here's B.J. Gwynn. <laughs> Left-handed batter waits, and Plaza's pitch to him. Breaking ball stays inside, and the count goes one ball and one strike. Here's the numbers on B.J., 285, so they've been going up lately. Three home runs, 22 RBIs. Here's the pitch to him, swinging. Lifts this one in the air, right center field. And going over there is Hibbert, and the center fielder in left center. Matt Hibbert makes the catch. B.J. Gwynn is out number two. And here comes Vinny Galetti, league leader in RBI, the league leader in batting average. And here is the stompers defensively, Metzger, Hibbert, Lococo, left to right in the outfield. Miyadera at third, Fox at short, Yuki Asuda in his usual spot at second. Scott David is at first. Daniel Comstock gets the start behind the plate. For the aforementioned right-hander, Scott Plaza, his first pitch to Vinny Galetti, misses ball one. And there you see these spectacular numbers from Vinny Galetti. And are those MVP worthy? Well, they certainly are. Swinging a ground ball right side. Yasudo has it, bobbles it, recovers, throws him out. And it's a one, two, three inning for the Sonoma Stoppers. Through one here in Pittsburgh, Stoppers and Diamonds, no score. All right, as we go to the top half of the second inning, Daniel Comstock will lead it off. There you see the numbers on Daniel, 252, three home runs, 20 RBIs. And he'll be followed by Masa Miyadera and Yuki Yasuda. And should anybody reach, we'd see the ninth place hitter, Matt Lococo. Now here's Comstock. Getting the start tonight against the left-hander. Takes outside for a ball, one ball with no strikes. Isaac Wenrick, the... Guy who gets most of the starts at catcher. But uh, they've got that lefty righty platoon situation. So Comstock gets the start when the lefties are in there and pitch is low for a ball, and the count goes two balls and no strikes. Now, even though Blackley was able to avoid giving up any runs in that top of the first, did make several pitches. And of course, the Stoppers trying to get into that Diamonds bullpen. Although they did have a pretty good night last night. Here's a pitch in there for a strike, but uh, it is certainly a 
part of the ball club that Aaron Miles and the Diamond Brain Trust will have to address in the off season. Figure out what that uh, bullpen is going to be like. Or Skylar Shaw Fust, who was doing a good job as a starter this year, was moved into that uh, bullpen. Here's a pitch, big swing and a miss for a strike, and the count goes two and two. But the results were mixed for Skyler. The ERA pretty high. When he first went over there, things were going pretty well. He was having some success as a starter, but the Diamonds needed some help in the bullpen. So Shaw Fest went in there and did a pretty good job. 2-2 two -two pitch, swing and a miss, and that's strike three. So Comstock strikes out here to lead off the second, and that is the second strikeout of the ball game. Two in a row now as uh, Blackley got Metzger to end that first and he gets Comstock to start the second, and that'll bring up Masa Miyadera. 247, no home runs, 24 RBIs for Masa. And he'll try to get things going here with Yuki Yasuda waiting on deck. Masa had been playing some of those middle infield positions. We got a chance to see him at shortstop, but then when they brought Derek Fox back, here's a pitch in there for a strike. Fox immediately claimed that uh, shortstop position. And Miyadera had to play elsewhere, but certainly a guy who can help you on the infield. Play those three different positions. No balls, one strike to Massa, and the right-handed batter waits. Pitch inside, or actually on the inside corner, and that is strike two. Here's a good look from that uh, third base camera. Travis Blackley getting the sign from Farley. Diamond battery comes together. Go to pitch, and that one hops up there. Farley will track that one down. And the count remains. Our count goes down to one ball and two strikes. Couple hits already for the Stompers. Diamonds go one, two, three in the first. You know, this level of baseball, you just don't know who's coming back and who's not. Who's gonna get off offers from elsewhere and some of the guys who may decide to hang it up. Here's one, two pitch. That was a little ground ball off the mound to get it. it is the pitcher Blackley. He flips to first base and two up and two down here in the second inning and that'll bring up Yuki Yasuda. So Miyadera is out one to three. And Yuki bats here with nobody aboard and two down. Now batting second baseman, number eight. Rodakir Knight here in Pittsburgh as you look at Yuki's numbers. Pretty good with the RBIs, 39. And those three home runs belie the power that uh, this guy really has. Here's the pitch and that one just had to scrape him. Yes, it did. Yuki showing Danny Speck that yes, I got hit. Danny agrees. And Yuki Yasuda down to first base with a hit by pitch. So Yasuda reaches. Couple of base hits for Fox and David in that first. Blackley was able to strand runners at second and third. And now with the first two out here, he hits Yasuda. So he's aboard. Here's Matt Lococo, even 200 on the batting average, 24 RBIs for him. But I mentioned the power of Yuki Yasuda doing a game earlier in the season up in the wine country, and he absolutely launched one at Arnold Field over the left field bleachers, completely clearing those, and uh, well, that is a long way to hit a baseball. Very slightly built young man, but he does possess some powers, a pitch outside for a ball, and they count one ball and no strikes. And of course, we saw that from Jose Garcia, diminutive guy and doesn't look like he'd have a lot of power but uh, he ended up hitting five home runs while with the diamonds of course he's since been promoted so congratulations to him and we wish him well in his future endeavors and there's a throw over to first base so a couple of diamonds this year getting the promotion Tyler Steyerwalt the fine right-handed pitcher of the diamonds who was having such a good year also was called up and that's really what it's all about here. Trying to play winning baseball and to see these guys make it to the next level. Here's a pitch and that's in there for a strike and the count one and one. 
And of course, those feelings are always bittersweet, especially when Steyerwalt uh, said goodbye. The Diamonds were still very much alive in the race. And uh, they had to go find another pitcher to replace Steyerwalt. And well, he's a, a tough guy to replace because of the good numbers that he had put up. One ball, one strike. Here to Matt Lococo, the ninth place hitter. Here's the pitch to him. So we get a foul back to the screen. And the count goes one ball and two strikes. Dakota Freeze was the, the guy the Diamonds tapped to replace Tyler Steyerwalt. And Dakota made a couple of starts, including one in Vallejo in that uh, series that the Diamonds were swept that uh, virtually ended their chance to win the second half. And Dakota had a couple of tough starts. So Steyerwalt's absence certainly did hurt Pittsburgh. There goes the runner. Here's the pitch, and that ball is high. The throw down is not in time. A bit high on the throw from Kevin Farley. Not one of his best efforts. Certainly seen Kevin make that throw much more on a line and much more to the place where it had to be. And this one sailed on him just a little bit, so not quite as accurate and not quite as uh, as hard as he usually would get it down to second base. So that is a stolen base for Yuki Yasuda. In scoring position now for Matt Lococo. Here's the 2-2, breaking ball just did get a piece. Did he hold on? Yes, he did. What a play by Farley to hold on to that ball. Well, that ball was tipped by Lococo. And it's strike three because the catcher, Farley, is able to hold on. So another strikeout for Travis Blackley. And at the end of one and a half, stompers and diamonds, no score. All right, back to Winter Chevrolet Stadium here in Pittsburgh. And uh, Scott Plaza, the stomper right-hander will face Wes Wallace. The cleanup man for the Diamonds, and then Bautista, then Marta Carena, the middle part of the order to face the Stompers. And it's a one nothing game now as we look out to San Rafael and the Pacifics leading the Admirals by a score of one to nothing. The Pacifics picking up a run in the bottom of the first inning. And there's a swing and a miss by Wallace, and that's uh, apparently got a piece of the catcher, Daniel Comstock. So Comstock ailing a little bit, and they'll <laughs> give him a little bit of time to get over that. So Wallace, no balls with one strike to him. Picked up a home run last night, is 18th of the year. Continues to have a fine year with the bat. And one thing they certainly get from Wes is a rangy guy out there in center field. Here's the pitch to him, and that one is on the outside corner. A strike, and the count nothing and two with Gerald Bautista waiting on deck. Diamonds. Finishing up the 2017 campaign here tonight. Swing and a miss, and down goes Wes Wallace on strike. So he strikes out, and that probably the only thing that's wrong with his game is the strikeouts. That is strikeout 101 for Wes Wallace. That is a whole lot of strikeouts, but he's hitting right around 300. Driven in 53 runs coming in. We told you about the 18 home runs, so. If you're going to have numbers like that, well, they'll take the strikeout. Bautista, 228 home runs, 29 RBIs. And Gerald waits and swings and fouls this one off at the plate. It's going to roll up the third baseline, but uh, that bounce on the other side of the plate. That's going to be a foul ball. The count nothing and one with Marta Carreno waiting on deck. And Gerald Bautista coming over from the Admirals. Right near the end of the first half. He was hitting 292 there. The Admirals made a whole lot of changes. Things really worked out. Here's the pitch, swinging a ground ball up the middle. Yasuda raging behind the back. Backhands throws. The scoop.
scoop by Scott David to get him. What a play. Yuki Yasuda from behind the bag at second base on a ball that it was hit. I didn't think hard enough that it was going to get to Yuki soon enough that he was going to have a chance to make that play, and somehow he did. Boy, the Stompers have just played fantastic baseball here in the series, and you see that replay. Good work in the truck, guys. Nice look at that one. Clearly got Batista at first base. Boy, and with the plays that Metzger made in left yesterday and a couple of plays that Fox made, Boy, they played great defense in addition to getting such great starting pitching. Here's the pitch to Marta Carena, and that's swung on and missed for a strike. So the Diamonds got to be frustrated by what uh, the Stompers are doing because they've been shut down offensively just one run over two games. Here's the pitch, and that misses, and the count goes to one ball and one strike on Marta Carena. Marty waits, the 1-1 one, one pitch, and swung on it, missed strike two. And the, he's down the count, one ball and two strikes. But, so the Diamonds have struggled offensively in the first two games of this series, but uh, looked like a handful of times they had base hits, maybe even extra base hits. And the Stompers have been able to take some of those away. Taylor Thurber had a great night uh, pitching last night for the Stompers. Here's the pitch, and Marta Carina swings and fouls this one off of the right side and out of play, and the count one and two. So this was the team the Diamonds were chasing all year long, and just had some trouble beating this team. And looking at that first half, the Diamonds and the Stompers kind of even in their games against uh, Vallejo and San Rafael. Here's the one-two pitch. Marty reaches out, pokes this one out to left field. Metzger is there, and right in his tracks, he makes the catch. Diamond's done in the second, nothing across. Great play out there at second base by Yasuda. After two full between the Stompers and the Diamonds from Pittsburgh, no score. All right, as we go to the top of the third inning, and uh, it'll be Matt Hibbert to lead it off. Hibbert, Derek Fox, Joel Carranza, the first three to face Travis Blackley. Diamonds have gone in order in the first and the second so far. There you see the numbers on Matt. As he stands in, trying to get something going here in the third inning for the Stoppers. Vallejo losing early in San Rafael. Here's the pitch, breaking ball just off the outside part of the plate. And the count, one ball and no strikes to Matt Hibbert, he flew out to Bautista in right field his first time. Right-handed batter waits and the pitch and he pops this one up and foul. And the count goes to one ball and one strike. One ball, one strike to Matt Hibbert. Stopper center field extraordinaire. Another guy that covers a whole lot of ground. And boy, if you don't have speed, you cannot play in the outfield. A 1-1 pitch, here it is, swing, and that ball is looped into right center field. That's gonna be a base hit. It gets by Bautista, Wallace is gonna pick it up. He drops it and it's gonna end up being a double. Tonight is Rotacare night at Winter Chevrolet Stadium. Rotacare's Pittsburgh Clinic has been serving adults 18 and up for 28 years. They are located at St. Vincent de Paul of Contra Costa County, 2210 Gladstone Drive. To make an appointment, please call Wednesdays between 1 and 3 p.m. Their number is 439-2009. Rotacare is a nonprofit public benefit corporation that provides free medical care to those with the greatest need and the least access to medical care. Rotacare is located at St. Vincent de Paul of Contra Costa County in Pittsburgh. Swing it a foul back as uh, Derek Fox now stands in. So it's a double for Matt Hibbert. Fox, who had a base hit his first time, now stands in. Coming in with that 274 batting average. Even a little bit later in the season to Derek, but uh, 
with his ability, able to pick himself up a spot right away. Swing and a miss here, and the count goes to nothing and two. Not a chance to find out from Paula McAvoy, our uh, public address announcer, all the things that uh, the Rotarians do. Among those is literacy, polio vaccination, making sure people have clean water. Here's a pitch inside for a ball, one ball and two strikes. And uh, not only they do it here in America, but uh, other parts of the world as well. She was talking about some parts of the Middle East that are, of course, war-torn. <laughs> trying to get polio vaccinations out to folks in those areas. The one-two pitch, and now Blackley had uh, looked the runner back to second base. But uh, when you think of polio, you think of the, know, the 50s, and that had been eradicated by the by uh, Jonas Salk. And here's the pitch, swinging a ground ball right side. The runner is going to move up to third. B.J. Gwynn picks up the hop, throws the first in time for the out. So Derek Fox is out, but it's productive as Matt Hibber trots on down to third base, and he's there now with less than two outs. So Fox is out four to three. And here comes Joel Carranza. Carranza ended up popping out with that fielder's choice in that uh, first inning. Right-handed batter waits. Here's the pitch from Blackley. Swing, and this one popped up right side, and that'll get out of play. I mean, when you think of polio, you just think of something that's been eradicated so long ago. I mean, I've watched things about that on the History Channel. But apparently in some parts of the world, it is still exists, and boy, what a devastating illness that can be. So the Rotarians doing their part to help the less fortunate and those in need. There's a strike on the outside corner of the count. No balls and two strikes to Joel Carranza. Three hits in the ball game now for the Stompers trying to get the first lead tonight. Diamond still searching for their offense here in this series. Diamond infield comes in. Here's the pitch, swinging a ground ball. Blackley's got it. Going to look Hibbert back. Fires over to first in time for the outs. <laughs> Nicely done by Travis Blackley. If that gets over his head, Hibbert's most assuredly going to score. Because one of the middle infielders, either Gwynn or Mello, would have to range towards second base. And either one of them that uh, made the grab would have to turn around, make that quarter turn and fire to home play, chances are they would not be able to get the speedy Matt Hibbert. So Blackley able to keep the stompers off the board, at least for the moment. And Scott David and his 50 RBIs checks in. So Carranza out one to three. David had a base hit his first time. Here's the pitch to him and that curveball just does stay high. On the count, one ball and no strikes. A former major leaguer and Australian, Travis Blackley. I was able to pick him up midway through the year. I've been told that uh, some major league organizations still interested in his services. Here's the pitch, and that uh, one is low for a ball, and the count goes two balls and no strikes. So. The Stompers, a couple of runners in scoring position in the first. Yuki Asuda got to second base in the second. Now Matt Hebert standing at third base here in the third. And likely turn him away one more time. The 2-0 pitch, here it is, and that's way outside. Ball three, three balls and no strikes. You know, you got a couple of bases open, but you do have Brendan Metzger, the right-handed batter, right batter on deck. Scott David, a very difficult customer to deal with. Feet spread wide apart, and the 3-0 pitch to Scott, that's in there for a strike. That's that get it over strike on 3-0, and, oh, and David taking all the way, and it's 3-1. and one. Pretty nice crowd out here tonight. Grandstand filling up nicely. Twilight 
Turning into darkness here in Pittsburgh. Moon overhead and the pitch is in there a strike and it's three and two. <laughs> Scott David just about to flip the bat away. And boy, umpires must love that as we look into the stopper dugout. The defending champion is trying to make it two years in a row. All right, Scott David has worked it full and now he asks for time, granted by Danny Speck. Through two and two thirds, already 52 pitches. For Travis Blackley. Here's number 53, and that is low ball four, and he loses Scott David to the walk. That is the first walk of the game issued by Blackley. He did hit Yuki Asuda back in the second. So here comes Metzger with runners at first and third, and the Diamonds have had trouble with runners at first and third, but in this series, they ended up throwing out the runner at home plate, and that was Yuki Asuda, who was at third. They got the steal of second, they threw down. The, the ball was kind of cut off ahead of second base by Odomar Valdez, who fired back to the plate to get the out. So that was really the one time the Diamonds have executed that play properly. And it's been a situation that they have not been able to execute a lot this season. This one is up high for a ball, and that makes the count one ball and no strikes. But they did it perfectly a couple of games ago here in this series. So for Blackley, it's been a bit of a struggle, but so far so good. Nothing across for the Stompers. Now he's trying to strand two. Stranded two in the first, one in the second. He's got two more aboard here with two outs. Here in the third. It's turning out to be a hot, muggy night here in Pittsburgh. Here's the pitch, swing. This one popped up and foul. And that'll get out of play. And the count goes to a ball and a strike. Hibbert let it off with a double. Fox grounded out four to three. Carranza bounced back to Blackley, the pitcher, who made a nice play to turn that one into a one-three put out. And Scott David has walked. And now a one-one pitch to Brendan Metzger. Here it is, and that one is low. Two balls and a strike. So Blackley not able to do it the easy way. And on the other side for Scott Plaza, he has faced the minimum six up and six down so far for Pittsburgh. Blackley comes set, a look over at first. Kicks and fires, a two one, and that one is on the outside corner of strike and the count two and two. Stoppers eight to nothing winners on Tuesday night, winning seven to one last night. Trying to make it a three game sweep here tonight. Here's the two two, there goes the runner. The pitch is well, up high for a ball. It's three and two, so Scott David gets down to second base. He'll get himself a stolen base on that one. So the runners, three and two, two outs, but no force. So they won't get the extra jump here with the pitch. First base open, Daniel Comstock would be next. Payoff pitch. Big breaking ball that stays way up high, and Metzger has worked out a walk. Back-to-back -back walks here in the inning has loaded the bases here for Comstock. So Travis trying to pitch around that leadoff double. Got Fox and Carranza, but uh, 
has since yielded a couple of walks to Scott David and Brendan Metzger when he went to full counts to both. Here's the pitch way up high for a ball. We count one ball with no strikes and Blackley, well he hasn't given up any runs but he's laboring right now. That was his 60th pitch. Now usually if you're 15 and under per inning, that's good. You start getting over 15, it gets a bit high. You get over 20, that's a lot. A 1-0 pitch from Travis, and that one is a good fastball in there for a strike, and the count one and one. Travis trying to meander his way through this. Stoppers early on here have had base runners all over the place. Here's the 1-1 pitch, and that one just does miss, and the count goes two balls and a strike. Blackley ready. 2-1 to Comstock, swung on, a little looper behind first base. That's going to fall in for a base hit. One run is in, two runs are in. Comstock's going to have himself a two RBI base hit. Runners at first and third, two to nothing stoppers, and wouldn't you know it, sort of that wounded duck out there over the first baseman's head, dropping into short right field. And just bad luck there for Travis Blackley. He did set it up with a couple of walks, but boy, he made the pitch he wanted to, and Comstock didn't get a whole lot of it, but he gets enough of it to pick up a couple RBIs, and the first runs and the first lead of the ball game go to Sonoma. So Hibbert and Scott David come around to score. Aaron Miles out there to talk to his starter. And it looked like uh, the Diamonds were gonna get out of that inning. When that ball was first hit, you could tell it wasn't hit well. But uh, when I saw Vinny Galetti going back on the ball and the, just the way he started, you knew he didn't have a play. So some bad luck here for the Diamonds is a ball not hit very well, finds an open spot on the field, and just like that, the stoppers lead it two to nothing. Now the walks can't kill you. Scott David's walk turns into a run. Metzger's walk helps keep things alive. Comstock comes up with a two RBI base hit. First and third now for Masa Miyadera. Masa was out one to three his first time. And he takes ball one here, one ball and no strikes. So the script is the same through these first three games that I'm has given up runs early. Here's the pitch and swing and a foul, right side and out of play and the count goes to one and one. Gave up four in the first inning of game one, three in the second inning of game two and now two in the third inning of game three. And so far in this series, the Diamonds, well, they've been outscored now 17 to 1 by Sonoma. 1 1 pitch to Miyadera, swing and a foul back to the screen. The count goes 1 and 2. So now Blackley, one strike away of getting out of this jam, and his pitch total continues to climb. That was number 66. And the way most pitchers are handled, once uh, starting pitchers, I should say, once you get near that 100 range, the managers usually start to think that that's getting high. One two pitch instead of throw to first, and they got him picked off. They do. Travis Blackley, I told you about that great move among the best in the league, if not the best. And Comstock is picked off officially, it'll go as a caught stealing. And that will do it in the top of the third for the Stompers, but they do get a pair. And after two and a half here from Pittsburgh, Stompers two, Diamonds nothing. All right, here comes Pittsburgh, bottom half of the third. They find themselves now trailing two to nothing here. Two runs, four hits, no errors for Sonoma. Zero, zero, one. 
for Pittsburgh. It'll be J.J. Wagner, Kevin Farley, and Corey Mello, the first three to face Scott Plaza. A couple of one, two, three frames from Plaza. He's picked up the one strikeout, and he starts J.J. Wagner off with a strike, and they count nothing and one. So Plaza through two innings, very efficient with his pitch count. A one pitch, and that's uh, looks like a sinker possibly there. Going down at the strike zone, taken low for a ball. One ball and one strike. Wagner trying to get it started for Pittsburgh. Here is, boy, a breaking ball. The outside corner nicely placed. Just did catch a piece of that outside half. And they count one ball and two strikes. Darkness descending here at the seven o'clock start. Here on a Rotocare night in Pittsburgh. Final night of the season. And the Diamonds talked about the bullpen that uh, will be reworked going into the 2018 campaign. And well, the Diamonds with uh, a new minority owner being brought in, Wolfgang Krosky of Krosky Real Estate. Well, the Diamonds have a lot of plans, they have a lot more promotional events. Big swing and a miss on one low in the zone. And down goes J.J. Wagner with the strikeout. And that'll bring up Kevin Farley. So the Diamonds planning to have a lot more promotions going on next year. A lot more giveaways and things that'll be happening at the ballpark. And you can keep up with all that at DiamondsProBall.com. Well, lots gonna be happening out here at the ballpark in 2018. Should be a very exciting season for Diamonds baseball. Be part of it and remember, it looks like we're gonna have a six-team league Next year, here's the pitch, and that one is inside for a ball. One ball and no strikes. Now, I was told that uh, the Martinez franchise and also a franchise out in Napa were done deals, and they would be here for next year. And that one is up high for a ball. Two balls and no strikes. But uh, Karam Shaw said to, he was speaking to the audience tonight that he said that we hope to have those two teams. So... There's a bit of a contradiction there for me. And there's a strike in there, two balls and one strike. But uh, when I talked to Commissioner Stone you know, a couple of weeks ago, he talked about it like there was a done deal. We were gonna have six teams next year and we certainly would not go to five if only one of them was available. <laughs> two, one pitch, and that one is a ground ball, left side, backhanded by Fox in the hole, throws to first. Picked out by Scott David and another fine play by a middle infielder. Here are the stompers. That is the second excellent play by the stomper defense here tonight. Look at it again from Fox. His momentum going away from first base, able to make that long throw. And Scott David doing a nice job picking it over there at first base. And that is out number two. Farley is out six to three, but that hardly tells the story. So Yasuda got Bautista on a fine play. And now Derek Fox does likewise to Kevin Farley. Here's the pitch to Corey Mello, and that's high for a ball. And the Diamonds watching Metzger make those plays and the plays that they're making tonight. Diamonds are wondering, what do we got to do to get base hits? This one is low for a ball. And we count two balls and no strikes to Corey Mello. And you immediately saw Scott Plaza, the pitcher, point to his shortstop as to say, great play, Derek. 2-0 pitch, and that one is in there, a strike. And they count two balls and one strike to Corey Mello. And Mello trying to get this back to the top of the order for Odomar Valdez. 2-1, swing and a foul, and the count goes two and two. So the Diamond's gonna rework that bullpen, and you, can, you know the the lineup is just going to change. So many of these guys from all over the country and outside the country, where they will be in 2018, for so many of them is anybody's guess. I talked to, to Aaron Miles in San Rafael about what would be happening, and he simply told me that it's just way too early to tell right now. And of course, with a couple of more teams potentially coming in, likely coming in, you know, there's going to be not much more competition for good players. 
Two balls, two strikes. Here it is DeMello swinging. He fouls this one down the third base line. And the count remains two balls and two strikes. Aaron Miles, the diamond skipper, coaching on down to third base. I'm getting a good look at his bobblehead over here at the scorer's table. And Aaron was so very happy. Here's Aaron Miles. Mr. Bobblehead right there, and he was so happy to get that one as he did not have a chance to get one while he was in the majors. There's a swing and a ground ball left side, and Miyadera giving chase, but uh, that's a foul ball. And the count remains two and two, and he told me, well, you know, guys like, like uh, Pujols, well, those are the guys who get bobbleheads, <laughs> the star players. The utility guys like Aaron, well, they have to wait till they're managing here in the Pacific Association to get theirs. All right, Corey Mello waits. Another 2-2 pitch to him. Breaking ball, swung on and missed. Ball gets away. Comstock out there to get it. Throws down to first to complete the strikeout. And it's another 1-2-3 inning for Scott Plaza. He has faced the minimum through three. And at the end of three, stoppers two, diamonds nothing. All right, we go to the top of the fourth inning now. Masa Miyadera to lead it off. Miyadera, Yuki Yasuda, Matt Lococo, the bottom three of the order to, fa to face Travis Blackley. And it's been a bit of a struggle for Travis through three. He's given up a pair of runs and there's been a whole lot of traffic on the bases. And here's Miyadera's smart smash. And that is gonna be off the glove of the shortstop, Corey Mello on into left field. That is a leadoff base hit for Massa. And again, more traffic. And the base pass here for the Diamonds starting to look like Highway 4 in the morning. Another runner on base as Miyadera leads it off with a base hit. He's now one for two. Here's Yuki Yasuda hit by a pitch and stole a base in the second. Blackley was able to strand him on the base paths. Diamonds middle infield pinching a little bit towards second base as they look for the double play ball. And here's a throw back over to first base. Miyadera diving back in. So Blackley already showed that great move. As he was able to pick off Daniel Comstock. Officially that goes as a caught stealing. So a little bit of revenge for Blackley after Comstock got the blue two RBI base hit. Here's a bunt up the first baseline. Out from behind the plate is Farley. Has it, throws the first in time for the out. But a successful sacrifice for Yuki Yasuda as he gets the sack bunt down. And Miyadera moves into scoring position now at second base with one out. And an update from San Rafael. And the Pacifics had the one to nothing lead, but the Admirals have come back to tie it. They have also gone to the fourth inning there. Here's Matt Lacoco with an RBI chance now for Sonoma. Miyadera away from second. Right-handed batting Lococo up there. Pitch to him, big swing and a miss at the high fastball, and the count goes no balls and one strike. Diamonds baseball coming to you on Comcast 24, AT&T 99. Streaming on the city of Pittsburgh's website and also on Mixler.com. Many ways to get Diamonds baseball. Swinging a foul ball up and over the screen and out of play, and the count goes no balls and two strikes. For those of you on Delta TV, you can see the pitch count continue to rise for Travis Blackley. And just to let you know, for those on listening in on Mixler, well, 69 pitches, number 70 upcoming right now. There's a look at uh, Miyoshi down there at third base. And the 0-2 pitch, breaking ball just does miss the outside corner. That was a good looking pitch. Good arm action coming out of the hand. Couldn't tell whether that was going to be a fastball or a breaking ball. It turned out to be the breaking ball. There you see Miyoshi, third year, uh, the Stompers manager, looking for back-to-back -back championships. Blackley, a one-two pitch. Instead, a turn off the mound, and he'll get Miyadera diving back into second base. We've seen Blackley pick off a number of guys this year. 
Don't get too far off the base when he's out there. The one-two pitch, here it is. And that one gets down, gets away. Miadera started down to third base. Got a little less than halfway, and they saw that uh, the ball had not gotten too far away from Kevin Farley, so he thought the better of it and returned to second. Well, a good play by Farley to keep that one in the vicinity and save the Diamonds 90 feet. Now, that has been another sore spot for Pittsburgh. Aaron Miles told me the other day in San Rafael that uh, you know, even though that you see that with a lot of teams as far as pass balls and wild pitches, he said, Pittsburgh is the worst at it in the league. And he was very clear about that. And this one looked like that uh, got a piece of the bat. Count remains at two and two. So that is another issue that the Diamonds are gonna have to get settled. Of course, Alex McKeon, after the Diamonds were officially eliminated, he was placed on the inactive list as he went to back to Texas to attend college. Alex got the majority of the at-bats from the catching position for the Diamonds this year. 2-2 pitch, swung on, fouled off right side. It's a, the Diamonds may have a complete uh, new set of catchers next year. Chad Heiberger had been the primary backup, but uh, you know, a couple of months ago he had been injured and haven't seen Chad play in quite a long time. Joe Rendaza was also played some time at catcher. Kevin Farley a few games since the Diamonds brought him on. The 2-2 pitch, and that's way up high at inside. The count goes three balls and two strikes. Base hit for Miyadera. Sacrifice bunt for Yasuda to get Masa over there to second base. And yet another full count here issued by Travis Blackley. Three balls, two strikes to Matt Lacoco. And to turn this one back over the top of the order, Matt Hibbert. And more than that, trying to drive in a run. Here's a pitch, swung on it, missed strike three. Fastball in the outside half. Lacoco can't catch up. He is out number two. And we indeed go back to the top of the order for Matt Hibbert. Three strikeouts in the ball game now for Travis Blackley. And here's Hibbert, double and a run scored his last time. It was back in the second. Another RBI chance here for Matt. Right-handed batter waits, here's the pitch, and that one is, and that one hit him, and down to first base he'll go. And now Danny Speck out to talk to Travis Blackley a little bit. I'm not sure what uh, Danny Speck was upset about there. I'm, I don't think Blackley's trying to hit Matt Hibbert. I don't know, maybe did they have words earlier in the game or something, but didn't look like he gave an official warning to either Blackley or the dugout. Now Travis a bit upset. Corey Mello have a few words for the Diamond starter, second batter that uh, Blackley has hit tonight. He got Yasuda, and that was back in the second inning. So here is Derek Fox and his six RBIs in the series trying to add to that total. And the pitch, and that is in there for a strike and nothing on one to Derek Fox. Two outs in the inning, runners at first and second. Stompers looking to extend a two to nothing lead. Five hits in the ball game so far for the Stompers. They've gotten a few free passes as well. Here's the pitch and that one gets away. Miyadera started down to third, thought the better of it. And again, Farley, a couple of them that he has not been able to come up with cleanly, but he's been able to keep them close by. And the Diamonds have not been giving up those extra bases. One ball, one strike to Derek Fox as we look in from our center field camera. And the pitch, and that one is lifted in the air right side, but foul as that'll get on up and over the fence. Just beyond the 
Diamond bullpen down the right field line. One ball and two strikes to Derek. Taranza would be next. So far for Derek tonight, a base hit in the first. He bounced out to B.J. Gwynn. That was in the third. One-two pitch, a breaking ball that doesn't come down. Now one ball and two strikes, and some of those breakers just have not snapped downward enough for Blackley here tonight. So he's not quite had the feel on the breaking pitch, at least so far. Pitch count continues to climb. Now he wants uh, Kevin Farley, his battery mate, to go back through the signals. Diamond's trying to keep this one close. Here's the 2-2 pitch, and that one is outside for a ball. Count three balls and two strikes. Well, he does have a base open, albeit third base, and look who's coming up next, Joel Carranza. A very dangerous situation here for Blackley and the Diamonds. 3-2 pitch, the runners will get a jump here with two outs. There go the runners, 3-2 pitch, swung on and missed, ball gets away, bounces right back to Farley, coming off the boards, and he softly tosses the first base to complete the strikeout. The inning is over. The stoppers do not score. They strand two, and at the end of three and a half now, it's the stoppers two, diamonds nothing. All right, Odomar Valdez to lead it off as we head to the bottom of the four, two nothing stoppers. First one in there to Odomar, strike one. And the count, no balls and one strike to Valdez. Bounce back to the pitcher his first time. And he hits this one, a little flare. That's gonna be caught by the second baseman, Yasuda. And uh, he takes care of that one. One up and one down here for Scott Plaza. And now BJ Gwynn will come up to bat. Nobody aboard and one down. So Scott Plaza in this uh, starting pitching of the Stompers has been, well, they've been good all year. Let's uh, make no mistake about that, but uh, they have been excellent here in this series. Taylor Thurber last night had a great night. The pitch to B.J. Gwynn, a breaking ball in there, just kind of floats into the strike zone. Strike one. And the 0-1 pitch, and that one is taken low for a ball. One ball and one strike. So the Diamonds trying to get on the board. Just one run so far in this series for Pittsburgh. Gwynn waits. The 1-1 pitch to him. Swinging a ground ball. Yasuda circling this one. He's got it. Fires over to first. Off the bag comes David, but gets back to the bag quickly to record out number two. And just that fast, two up and two down. Gwynn bounces out to second base. Here's Vinny Galetti. He bounced out to second his first time. And he bounces the uh, bats here with the bases empty and two down. So Scott Plaza right now making quick work of the Diamonds. Through three and two thirds, he has faced the minimum. That's a pitch in there for a strike to Vinny and the count no balls and one strike. Here is the pitch to Vinny and that is up high for a ball. A 1-1 one, one pitch to Galetti, swinging, that ball's hit hard, but foul right side. And the count, no balls. Or now one ball and two strikes to Galetti as you look at those numbers coming in. Yeah, 64. 64 RBIs on top of the RBI leaderboard. A 1-2 pitch to Galetti, swing and a foul ball right side. And the count stays at one and two as Vinny battling Scott Plaza here. A 
1-1 score from San Rafael. Admirals of the Pacifics all tied up in Marin County. Here's the one-two pitch. Davini takes that one low, two balls and two strikes. Diamonds in this series have run into a Stompers team that uh, you know, they're hitting very well, they're pitching very well, and their defense has been outstanding. Here's a 2-2 pitch, swing and a foul, left side and up and over the screen. That'll get out of play. Take a look back there real quick, and uh, you see the soccer players in the uh, field over there, adjacent to the ballpark. There they are. Those guys are those guys are hardcore, and they'll play till late in the night. Two balls, two strikes to Vinny. Here it is, swinging this one, lifted in the air over third base, and that's going to drop in for a base hit. Vinny rounds first. He's headed for second. Now he's going to stop as the ball is picked up out there by Metzger. Vinny was thinking about two bases, but Metzger was over there in a hurry. Foul territory wide of the left field line. And I thought Vinny was with two outs and he might be a little more aggressive than that and go ahead and try to get into second base. But he's a guy who doesn't have great speed. And uh, well, you see the defense that the Stompers have been playing tonight. I'll tell you, I don't blame him for stopping at first. You give Wes Wallace a chance, the team leader in home runs. Picked up number 18 last night and probably not a bad decision by Vinny to go ahead and let uh, Wallace have a chance with a runner on base and you never know, one swing could tie this one up. So Vinny, first base runner of the night for the Diamonds. This one on the left side, picked up by Fox. He goes over to second in time to cut down Vinny at second base. And that will do it. So we are through four innings of play here in Pittsburgh. Diamonds and Stompers, it's the Stompers. Two nothing over Pittsburgh. All right, here's Joel Carranza to start it off as we move now to the top of the fifth inning. Diamonds trail at two to nothing. As you look at the Diamonds brain trust over there, just outside of their dugout. Joel Carranza, Scott David, Brendan Metzger here to face Travis Blackley. Even though he hasn't had the great stuff here tonight, swinging a foul by Carranza and out of play. They count nothing and one. He's through four innings, made a ton of pitches, given up five hits, but only two runs. So Blackley, even though he's kind of been struggling with command tonight, if you look at the numbers, for Carranza, those 62 RBIs, still keeping the Diamonds in the ball game. Here's a pitch in that uh, misses outside, one ball and one strike. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch, Blackley taking a long time. Here's the pitch to Caranta, swung on and missed strike two. That one was fading away from him. Joel could not lay off, and he's down in the count now. One ball and two strikes. And Joel swings at this one into center field, fading over to right center. Wallace calls, cuts in front of Bautista to make the catch. And Bautista out number one here as we start the top of the fifth inning. Or rather, Carranza out as we start the top of the fifth inning. And that'll bring up Scott David. So here's Scott David. Another look at his fine numbers. Scott David batting here, nobody aboard and one down. Standard batter waits, here's the pitch, swing and a foul back to the screen. David waving that bat back and forth. Good look here from our center field camera. Likely getting close to 90 pitches already on the evening. Here's the pitch, and that one uh, bends inside, and the count goes one ball and one strike. 
So in game one of the series a couple of nights ago it was Eric Gonzalez who really had the diamonds number. Gonzalez a complete game, five hitter. Right, nine innings, no earned runs. He struck out four. Here's the pitch, swinging that one, slap left side. That is going to get down for extra bases, possibly. David rounding first, picked up by Marta Carina. The throw in the second is not in time. And it's a one out double for Scott David, able to slice that one down the left field line. It just stayed fair. That's a nearly picked up some chalk as it hit the line down there. Marta Carina got down there in a hurry into foul territory to pick that ball up, but could not keep Scott David from getting into second base. So it was Gonzalez on the first night with the complete game shutout. And last night, Taylor Thurber, he went six and a third. He didn't give up any runs. Well, the Diamonds have been dazzled here in the three game series so far by the Stompers pitchers. This one inside and low. Ball one, one ball and no strikes to Metzger. And the Stompers have yet another runner in scoring position. It's been that way all night long, but so far, just two runs yielded by Travis Blackley. Diamonds look like they're starting to stir down there in the bullpen. Here's Blackley, he wants Farley to go back through the signals. And of course, now they're trying to hide them from Scott David over there at second base, the 1-0 pitch, and that one hops up there for a ball. And they count two balls and no strikes. This is called baseball espionage. There are the Diamonds, you know, get a couple of guys loosened up, but I don't think either one of those guys are a pitcher. That is Joe Rendazzo with some of the gear on. He's warming up to start warming up pitchers, it looks like. Could not tell who the other player was. Two balls, no strikes. And the pitch to Metzger, swinging a foul back to the screen. And the count goes to two balls and one strike. Two runs, six hits, no errors so far for Sonoma. Zero, one, and one thus far for the Diamonds. You get a guy out there at second base, a veteran like Scott David, and yeah, you gotta start changing up the signals a little bit. Maybe work them backwards and try to make sure that Scott David's not able to tip off Metzger here. 2-1 pitch, and that one on the outside corner is striking, it's 2-2. Two and two. Good fastball there from Travis Blackley. And Blackley trying to get out of another jam. And like the Stompers have had him on the ropes all night long, but have not been able to get the knockout punch. Here's the pitch, swinging a ground ball to third. And that uh, is gonna be picked up by Wagner. Fires over to first in time for the out, all the while making sure that Scott David was staying close to second base. Nicely played by J.J. Wagner. That one took a bit of a funny hop on J.J., but he was able to stay with it nicely. And we'll take another look here. That was kind of that in-between hop. But Wagner was able to play it well and get out number two. So Metzger bounces out five to three. And here's Comstock. He of the two RBI base hit back in the third. And that has accounted for all the runs so far here in game three, which is the final game for the Diamonds here in the 2017 campaign. Here's the pitch that's up high for a ball. And the count goes one ball and no strikes to Comstock, trying to keep this one alive and get it to Masa Miyadera. And more importantly, trying to drive in the third run of the ball game here for the stops. Stock waits, here's the pitch, he fouls this one off. It looked like he got that one in on the handle. Did not have that crisp bat sound as it uh, went back to the screen. Comstock and the home plate umpire Danny Speck talking it over and I think Daniel wanted to make sure, Comstock that is, one Dan to another, wanted to make sure that, uh, that pitch was in fact in the strike zone. Got a big raffle going on here. Paula McAvoy, our 
PA announcer has everybody fired up. Here's a pitch down low in the zone now, and the count goes to two balls and a strike. So this could be the last game for the Stompers in the season as well. They're winning. The Admirals are tied. Stompers win, Admirals lose. Stompers, well, they're the champions of the 2017 campaign. This is a pitch that's going to be outside and low in the count. Goes to three balls and one strike, and they've just been fantastic throughout this season. Kind of ran away from everybody in that first half. The Diamonds made a nice push at the very end. When it looked like the Diamonds were kind of out of it, Stompers went into a bit of a tailspin, and the Diamonds were picking up speed. And the three-run home run by J.J. Wagner, I mentioned it was part of that. And that ball just inside, just did miss. And that is another walk issued by Travis Blackley. So it's been three walks in the ball game, but also two batters hit by a pitch. So all told, five free passes yielded by Travis Blackley tonight, and that has certainly contributed to the high pitch count, which has now gone to 100, showing zero on the screen. But uh, that is actually, folks, in triple digits now. Here's the pitch. Miedera, a big swing and a miss, and the count nothing in one. So more traffic on the base paths here for the Diamonds to deal with. And Masa Miadera now base hit his last time. That was leading off the fourth. Trying to pick up another run here for the Stompers. Rodekir Knight here from Pittsburgh. The 0-1 pitch. Swing and a miss of the high fastball on the count. 0-2. Boy. And if I was Travis Blackley right now, if the way Miyadera is not handling that high fastball, I'd go up even a little bit higher with this next one. Let's see how the diamond left-hander chooses to work this one. Two on, two out. 0-2 to Miyadera. here it is. Swung on ground ball, and Blackley's got it on the mound. He'll flip underhanded to first base, side retired, and the stoppers turned away again. They get two on, they do not score, and we will go to the bottom of the fifth inning now. The Stompers leading the Diamonds, two to nothing. All right, back to Winter Chevrolet Stadium in Pittsburgh. A two nothing lead here for the Stompers, and they so many times have been threatened to score, and uh, Blackley keeps uh, turning them away. For Blackley, he's given up the two runs on six hits. But the Stompers cannot get that knockout punch. So even though he has not had his best stuff tonight, he is still pitching a pretty good game and keeping the Diamonds in contention here. So the Diamonds now will lead it off with uh, Gerald Bautista. Bautista, Marta Corina, and J.J. Wagner here in the home half of the fifth. Bautista, there are the numbers. Overall around that 250 mark, here's the pitch, and that uh, is in there for a strike. And the count one ball and no strikes. Bautista trying to get aboard for Marta Carena, and here's the pitch. And that one is hit well into left center field. Over comes Hibbert, racing over, reaches up and makes the catch. It's Rotacare night at the ballpark. Rotacare provides care to the growing population of working and unemployed residents who are unable to pay for primary health care. Rotacare Bay Area is heavily supported through grants, donations, and the hard work of our volunteers. Our clinics are expanding their service capacity to accommodate patient needs, especially in the prevention and management of injury through physical therapy and chronic conditions such as hypertension, diabetes, asthma, and respiratory conditions. Click or call us today for an appointment. All right, nobody aboard one out for Marta Carina. The pitch to him turns him away, but the ball catches the inside part of the play and the count nothing and one to Marty. So Bautista flies out to center. Marta Carena flew to left his first time. Here's the pitch, and he swings and misses, doesn't get it. And the count, nothing and two to Marty. There you see the numbers for him. Marta Carena off to a good start this season, but has tailed off 
as the season has moved on. Still put up pretty good numbers and played nicely in left field for Pittsburgh. Here's the pitch swinging a foul back and out of play. And Marty made a dazzling catch in yesterday's game out in left field, racing back into the corner and kind of catching one over his shoulder. Here's Aaron Miles looking on. Pitch to Marty, that one is low for a ball. And the count, one ball and two strikes. Gonzalez, Thurber, and now Scott Plaza. And well, the Diamonds have been dazzled here by stopper pitching, and this one is outside for a ball. Two balls and two strikes, but what a lineup the Diamonds have. Power, speed, a lot of guys who can get you a base hit, but they have been shut down in this series. Here's the 2-2 pitch, swing and a foul, right side and out of play. And the count remains at two balls and two strikes, but so one thing you've seen from the Diamonds is when they get down in ball games, and this was even last year as well, they have the ability to get off the deck. It has not happened so far in this series, but you're always expecting them to get it going offensively at some point. Here's the 2-2 pitch to Marty Carina up high for a ball. The count goes full now, three balls and two strikes. Marty waving that bat up high. Plaza long looked in, into the windup, kicks and fires, payoff pitch. Marty reaches out and hits this one into right center field. Hibbert going over, he'll get there and make the catch. So Marty Carina hits it pretty well, looping liner, but uh, fairly routine for Matt Hibbert out there in center field. So Hibbert takes care of Bautista and Marta Carina. And that's two outs of the inning. Here's J.J. Wagner. He struck out leading off the third. Made a nice play defensively over there at third base tonight. No Wagner bouts here with nobody aboard and two down. So far for the Diamonds, only one man has reached. That was Vinny Galetti with a double in the fourth inning. Other than that, it has been one, two, three innings for the Diamonds, and right now Wagner trying to avoid that here in the fifth. Pitch to J.J., and this one up high for a ball. One ball and no strikes. Pitch count now at 53 for Scott Plaza. Very good number there, and this one is just outside for a ball, so he's under 15 per. That's certainly where you want to be. Two zero pitch, big swing and a miss, and the count two and one to JJ. Right-hander waits, the 2-1 pitch, and that one on the outside corner for a strike, and the count two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Bottom half of the fifth inning, a 2-0 lead for Sonoma. Just seven hits in the ball game. Six of those belong to the stoppers. 2-2 two -two pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. Another 1-2-3 inning as J.J. Wagner strikes out for the second time. That ends the fifth to the top of the sixth we go. It's Sonoma two, diamonds nothing. All right, here we go now to the top of the sixth inning. Yuki Asuda gonna lead it off. So here's Yasuda now. Yasuda, Lococo back to the top of the order for Matt Hibbert. Blackley out there for another inning of work. Diamonds bullpen is up and going. Trying to see who's warming up down there. Not uh, exactly sure who that is. They've got somebody warming up. There it is. Here's a pitch to Yusuda, and that uh, is in there for a strike, and they count nothing and one. Yeah. 
And the pitch is in there for a strike two. Joe Rendazzo is now behind the plate for the Diamonds. So one half of the battery has been changed. The 0-2 pitch here to Yasuda, way up high for a ball. Only count one ball and two strikes. Boy, Kevin Farley's just out of the ball game right now for Pittsburgh. And Rendazzo will get some more work behind the plate. Here's the one-two pitch, swinging a foul back to the screen. And the count stays at one ball and two strikes. And there's our Paul boy, Bodie, dancer extraordinaire. And all around ham. Well, that kid loves the spotlight. The one-two pitch to Yasuda, swinging a foul up and over the screen. And Yasuda battling Travis Blackley, who just made his 108th pitch. And I'm being told that is Dakota Freeze out there in the Diamond bullpen. Told you that uh, Diamonds picked him up when Tyler Steyerwalt was promoted. Had a couple of starts for the Diamonds already. Here's the one-two pitch, swinging a foul right side. That'll get out of play. And uh, Yasuda continues to foul off pitch after pitch. There is Dakota Freeze. Looks like he's about ready to go. Top of the sixth inning, stoppers two, Diamonds nothing. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. That one was really tailing down and away from the right-hander, Yasuda, and he swings right over the top, and he's a strikeout victim to start the sixth inning, and that'll bring up the ninth place hitter, the right fielder, Matt Lococo. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there's three nachos out there and hot dogs for a dollar. Anybody want any Skittles? Four strikeout on the ball game for Travis Blackley as he faces Lococo now. I just got a free bag of Skittles and I didn't even have to get a foul ball. And the thing is, you, know, you ask these players to do more than one thing at a time. Can I chew Skittles and still call the game? I am a multitasker. The 1-0 pitch, and that one is low for a ball, and the count goes two balls and no strikes for Lococo. He's 0 for 2 so far. They got him in the second, got him in the fourth. And in the fourth, he was one of the strikeout victims for Travis Blackley. I don't know how much longer they're gonna let Blackley go. He's now made 112 pitches, and here's 100 and a baker's dozen that's low for a ball, and the count three balls and no strikes. Well, one thing about Blackley, seeing here tonight, even a guy that uh, doesn't have his good stuff but can still his pitch as effectively as he has, it tells you how good a guy is. Here's a 3-0 pitch, and that one is low for a ball, ball four. So it's a walk to Lococo with one out. Back to the top of the order we go for Matt Hibbert. Because that's what they say about you know good pitchers. And of course, they're not going to have their good stuff every night. Some of those nights, they're not going to have a feel of one of their pitches or more than one of their pitches but uh, the ability to battle and still get people out when they're not at their best big sign of how good a pitcher is and travis blackley has pitched well despite uh, struggling with his command here tonight his curveball certainly has not had that snap on it that we've seen earlier in the season Coco gets a lead out there, and here goes a throw over to first base, and you know, the league knows now. <laughs> they found out rather quickly that this guy has a superior move to first base. Already picked off one player here tonight. And of course was Comstock after he picked up that two RBI base hit back in the third. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss by Hibbert. Good fastball. And they count no balls and one strike. The Best pitch put up there so far tonight by Travis has been that high fastball. Hitters have had problems catching up to that one and they've also had problems laying off. 
Rococo away from first, the 0-1 pitch to Hibbert. That tried that breaking ball again, and then you hear that uh, kind of upset grunt coming out of the mouth of Blackley. Tried to snap that ball out of the air in frustration as it came back to him. He was very frustrated, and I think he, the frustration stems from the, his inability to get that snap on his curveball. One ball, one strike, one out, one on. Top half of the sixth from Winter Chevrolet Stadium. Diamonds finishing up the 2017 campaign. Hibbert waits, the 1-1, one, one, and that one swung on, grounded foul. Sounded like Hibbert broke his back. He's ch checking the lumber right now, and he'll go get a new baseball bat. Oh, and now they're passing out free its-its. Can I eat an its-it and call a game at the same time? <laughs> it's gotta be louder than that. <laughs> I mean, talk about a perfect night for ice cream. Boy, it was over 100 degrees here today. And it hasn't cooled off that much here at night. Sort of a half moon overhead here in Pittsburgh. All right, blue shirt, here you go. <laughs> and that is Wolfgang Krosky, our benevolent minority owner, just come onto the team here recently. And uh, right now, he's Santa Claus here in August because he's passing out the goodies. There goes the runner. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. And it's going to be a stolen base for Lococo as he gets down to second base now. Matt Hibbert strikes out for out number two. So Matt goes down. And that'll bring up Derek Fox. Runner at second, two outs here for Derek Fox. Got him the last time, they got him in the third. He got a base hit in the first, one for three so far. And the pitch, a fastball that just does miss. And the count goes one ball and no strikes. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Derek Fox. This one fouled off left side. And the count goes one ball and one strike. Well, Rotocare has raised $3,316 here tonight. And today the Pittsburgh Diamonds will support the Contra Costa Food Bank. Matching donation of up to $500. And I think I want to thank everybody for their support. And thank the Contra Costa Food Bank for supporting our community with uh, your hard work and dedication. $3,316 collected by Rotacare tonight here at the ballpark in Pittsburgh. So glad you could be with us and uh, so glad you could be a part of Diamonds Baseball in 2017. And we hope to see you early and often in the 2018 campaign. So all the way to next June seems like a long way, but it will be here before you know it. 2-1 pitch to Fox, swinging a foul ball up and over the screen and out of play, and the count goes to 2-2. Two two. So Blackley has been pitching around base runners all night long, trying to put up another zero. Trying to turn away Derek Fox and the Stompers here in the top of the sixth inning. Here's the pitch, and there's a ground ball to Mello at short. He's got it, fires over to first, and Vinny cannot pick it out. Looking for the baseball, and Lococo's going to round third, and he's going to score. So the throw was low by Corey Mello, and uh, trying to pick it over there was Vinny Galetti at first base. Take another look. Lococo had it in good shape and just threw the ball a bit short. And Vinny waved at it to try to pick it, and we've seen him do that a number of times this year, but not on that one, and that'll be an E6, no RBI awarded to Fox, but that doesn't help the Diamonds cause. It's three to nothing. And that uh, keeps it alive for Joel Carranza. And actually, it's Daniel Baptista now who will bat for Joel. So we've got a pinch hitter here, and Carranza gives way to Baptista. Powerful left-handed batter waits, and the pitch is on the inside corner of strike, and that was a tough one for Blackley. It looked like he was out of the inning, 
Made the pitch that he wanted, got it hit to Mello, who had it in plenty of time, but the Diamonds could not complete the put out. So the run scores, the inning continues, and it's the second error of the ball game for Pittsburgh. Here's the 0-1 pitch, and Baptista takes low for a ball, and the count goes to one ball and one strike. Blackley taking a long time in between pitches here. Box away from first base being held on by Galetti and the throw's gonna go over there. Not the best move, that was the vanilla move that time by Travis. Here's the numbers on Baptista, 288, a home run, 19 RBIs. Here's the pitch and a, kind of a weak swing by Baps that time as he misses and the count goes one and two. Baptista, spending time on the injured list this year. They're trying to be part of a, another championship team here for the Sonoma Stompers. Good crowd out here tonight for Rota Care Night here at Winter Chevrolet Stadium. Baptista swings and fouls this one off at the plate. And the count, one ball and two strikes. Check our out of town scoreboard by that I mean the smartphone and the Vallejo Admirals now six to two. And they've gone to the sixth inning as well in San Rafael, a four run lead for Vallejo. So Sonoma winning three to nothing, Vallejo winning six to two. And if that holds, championship game tomorrow night in Sonoma, swing and a miss by Baptista. He is out number three, Blackley gets through the top of the sixth inning, but the Stoppers do get a run. And after five and a half here from Pittsburgh, Stoppers three, Diamonds nothing. All right, back here at Winter Chevrolet Stadium in Pittsburgh. And right, we're gonna pause 10 seconds for station identification on Pacific Association of Professional Baseball Clubs Network. You're watching Pittsburgh's Diamonds Baseball on Delta TV Channel 24, part of the Pacific Association of Professional Baseball Clubs covering San Rafael, Sonoma, Vallejo, and Pittsburgh, California. And hoping, hoping next year, Martinez and Napa as well. So here's Kevin Farley, and I was just alerted to the fact that uh, Marta Karina in that last half inning had come out of the game in left field. And Farley, who was replaced at catcher by Joe Rendazzo, Farley had moved from catcher to left field. And I always alerted to these things well after the fact. But uh, there was the change for you. There's a pitch, and that is in there for a strike. Here we count nothing and one to Farley. Another inning of work for Scott Plaza. Got himself a shutout going. You know, one pitch to Farley and started to swing, holds up, and that uh, pitch does miss. One ball and one strike. Plaza with the sign, and he winds, uh, deals the 1-1, one -one, swing and a foul, and the count goes one and two. Scott Plaza certainly has things going his way. You see the pitch count not very high. He's been very efficient with his number of pitches here tonight. Just 59 so far. And now a long conversation with his battery mate, Daniel Comstock, as they decide how to complete this at bat here to Kevin Farley. Farley spent time with the stoppers this year. Coming over to the Diamonds a couple of weeks ago. And certainly a candidate for the Diamonds to be one of their catchers next year. Here's the pitch swing, and this one into right center field. Coming over is the right fielder, Lococo. He has it in right center field for out number one, and that is how the bottom of the sixth starts for the Diamonds. Farley a fly ball to right. And uh, here's Corey Mello, the shortstop and ninth place hitter. <laughs> so 
No mellow bounce, nobody aboard, and one down on the pitch to him, and started to swing, holds up, takes a ball. Count one ball and no strikes. Here are the numbers on Corey, 276, four RBIs, limited action here this year. One ball, no strikes to Corey. Here's the pitch, and that a fastball in there for a strike, and the count goes, well, actually, he missed with that pitch. Two balls and no strikes. I got to slow down here and let uh, Danny Speck call the balls and strikes, and I'll just call the game. 2-0 pitch. 3-0 oh, as that one is low. My vantage point, I'm sitting behind home plate, just off to the right, slightly up the first base line. So I'm kind of off center a bit and the 3-0 pitch and that one misses ball four. So the Diamonds get a one out walk here and Mello's aboard. So that is just the second Diamond to reach base. They've got a double and they've got a walk and that's it. Here comes Odomar Valdez. One on one out for Odomar. Diamond's still well within striking distance here and still a bit of baseball left to be played and that's a strike in there and the count nothing and one. Wide open there on the left side of the infield. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss, and the count nothing and two to Odomar Valdez. And the third baseman, Leodera, playing a few steps off the line at third base, even with the bag. Now a throw over to first, and you have Derek Fox kind of shading towards second base as the stopper's looking for a double play ball, so on that left side, there is some room for Valdez. DJ Gwynn waits on deck, 0-2 pitch, and Odomar just slaps at that one to stay alive, really at the last possible second, pulling the trigger. And that uh, swing was all arms. That was a very defensive swing that time by Odomar Valdez. Did not have the lower half into that one at all, but uh, Able to fight off a tough pitch. And the count remains at 0-2 to number two. Diamonds DH tonight. Valdez, here's the pitch, and that one is a breaking ball low, and the count one ball and two strikes. So I'm sure the stoppers are aware of the situation out in San Rafael. And the only way they can clinch tonight and win the championship is by winning and having Vallejo lose. A one-two pitch, swung on, popped up, left side. Miadera behind third base, giving chase toward the line. He falls down, he can't make the catch. Corey Mello hustling in a second. Here comes the throw, it's not in time. So let's take another look at this one. Miadera going back, and he kind of overran it a little bit, stumbled as he went for it, fell down, he couldn't make the catch. And on the play, Corey Mello had stopped halfway between first and second, as you're supposed to do, to see whether or not that uh, ball is gonna get caught. No infield fly rules, it was just too far back into the outfield. And when Corey saw that it wasn't caught, he hustled into second base just ahead of the throw. Well, it looks like they're gonna call that a pop fly base hit for Odomar. Well, the Diamonds will take it first and second now, and VJ Gwynn representing the tying run. He comes up to the plate, breaking ball, swings and fouls it off. And the count nothing and one with Vinny Galetti coming up on deck. So the Diamonds catch a break on a ball that uh, it looked like Miyadera should have made, unable to do so. And sometimes when you're going back on that ball, there is Vinny Galetti. When you're going back on that ball from third base, that's kind of an awkward situation. And sometimes the shortstop has a better angle. 
to that baseball. Here's the pitch, and that one, boy, he took something off there for Scott Plaza. Nice pitch by Scott. In there for strike two, and the count, no balls and two strikes. Here to B.J. Gwynn. Stoppers looking for a possible championship here tonight. Diamond's trying to spoil the party on the season finale here in Pittsburgh, and this one is fouled off and out of play. Been a lot of fun this year, been a lot of good Diamonds baseball, and Proust, I'm sure there's going to be a lot more in 2018. I'll well, check that out, we'll get it started next summer in June. Should be a whole lot of new promotions and a lot of different things happening here at the ballpark. Lots going on here at Diamonds Baseball, be part of it. Here's the 0-2 pitch, Gwynn swinging a ground ball, and that is gonna be into right field, a base hit. Mello's gonna run on third, and now he's gonna hold up, falls down as the throw is cut off, coming in from right field. And the bases are gonna be loaded. And here is a chance now for Vinny Galetti to pick up some more RBIs and continue to make a run at the MVP. And that'll be announced a little while after the season. And Vinny Galetti, you know, the league's leading hitter, top of the list in RBIs as well, and a chance to pick up some more with a base hit. And here you see the numbers on Vinny. That's coming into tonight's play. And so far tonight for Vinny, he's got a double in two trips. So B.J. Gwynn gonna pick up the base hit. So B.J.'s numbers continue to go up as the season has gone along. He had been down to 270, but uh, coming into tonight, we 285. Now a meeting on the mound. Miyoshi wants to talk it over with Scott Plaza, the rest of the infield joining in. So the stoppers. Look to be in control of this game, but you go back to Travis Blackley's work, even though he didn't have his best stuff, but uh, only given up the three runs through six innings, and one of those runs unearned. So Blackley, a quality start delivered to the Diamonds, even when he was not at his best. And now the Diamond offense, a chance to get even here or better here in the frame. Here's the pitch, and that's up high and away. Ball one, one ball and no strikes to Galetti. Farley started it off with a fly ball to right. Mello walk, pop fly base hit for Valdez. And a line drive base hit to right for B.J. Gwynn. Galetti waits, Plaza comes set. The 1-0 pitch, and that is low for a ball. Comstock making a nice short hop pickup on that last one. And he came out from behind the plate, ready to throw down to third base, had Corey Mello gotten off the bag too far. Two zero pitch, that's low for a ball, it's three and oh. Wes Wallace waits on deck. So all of a sudden, things getting tense here. A game that the Stompers need to win. There's Wes Wallace. 3-0 pitch to Vinny, and that misses ball four, and Vinny's gonna pick up RBI number 65. Gets this one with a walk. Here comes Corey Mello to score, and the Diamonds are on the board. It's three to one, and still just one out in the inning. Looking down into the bullpen for the Stompers. I don't see anybody throwing down there right now, but uh, looks like they're starting to get loose and go through some of those calisthenics. Here's Wes Wallace. And the pitch to Wes, and that one's on the outside corner of strike, and the count nothing and one. So Wes Wallace can tie it with a base hit. B.J. Gwynn out there at second base with pretty good speed representing the potential tying run. Gerald Bautista in the on-deck circle. Here's the pitch, swinging a ground ball foul wide of third. And the count goes no balls and two strikes. Well, here's been the problem. We've talked about the strikeouts for Wes Wallace. Somebody that the Diamonds obviously want back next year. And if he could get that part of his game corrected, he'd be a guy that would have a chance to win the MVP. 
Hitting over 300 most of the year, just under that right now. The 0-2 pitch to West, and that's way up high for a ball. The count one and two, and Scott Plaza all of a sudden having some troubles here in the home half of the sixth. Yielded a couple of hits and a run here in the inning. Big swing and a miss by Wallace, and down he goes for out number two. You know, you say about the guy who strikes out a lot, if you have the good numbers, you'll accept that. And then one of the things they point to is like, well, if you're striking out, at least you're not hitting it into a double play. The problem is when you're striking out, you're also not helping to move runners along. You're simply not giving yourself enough opportunities to get hits that could help your team score runs. Still a very fine year for Wes Wallace, and as I said, a guy the Diamonds would love to have back. Here's Bautista now, bases full, two outs, and he slams one into left field. That's going to get down for a base hit. Odomar scores. Here comes Gwynn. Here comes the throw. He scores. Throw down the third is in time to get the runner at third. Vinny Galetti, gonna, he's upset with the call. He's yelling at uh, Mark Beller, the, the field umpire, who is in good position to call it, and... Uh, Hopefully we'll get another look at that one. And Aaron Miles is gonna go talk to Mark Beller who doesn't really wanna have a conversation, but the Diamonds score three runs. They tie it at three. We are through six here from Pittsburgh. Diamonds and Stompers, a 3-3 three, three tie. Well, here's B.J. Gwynn scoring, and then Comstock is going to fire on to third base and cut down Vinny Galetti and take a look at that. Well, tough to see it on that, but Vinny was called out to end the inning, but the Diamonds do tie it with three runs in the sixth. Diamonds tie it, and now Dakota Freeze will be the new pitcher for Pittsburgh. And that is all for Travis Blackley. So he goes six innings, three runs, two earned for Travis. Six to two in favor of Vallejo against San Rafael. So they continue to lead there. So the new pitcher is Dakota Freeze, 0-2, a 16.5 ERA, six innings, 12 hits, seven walks, five strikeouts. That was his record with the Diamonds, picking up for Tyler Steyerwalt, who got promoted. So a couple of outings for Dakota Freeze didn't go the way that the Diamonds had hoped. But uh, his number is certainly better with San Rafael. Here's Marcus Bradley, 291, a home run, 36 RBIs. So Marcus Bradley coming into the ball game now, and he'll face the right-hander, Dakota Freeze. And the first pitch in there for a strike, and the count nothing and one. Dakota Freeze in his time with San Rafael this year. Three and three record, 492 ERA, 13 games, all of them starts. Here's the pitch, and that's inside for a ball. Did get a couple of shutouts. I think one of those was against the Diamonds. 67 and two thirds innings pitch. Struck out 97, that is a monster number there. So even though the ERA was kind of high at 492, this next pitch is low for a ball. Count two and one, the strikeout Two innings pitch ratio, excellent. 58 walks, 50 hits. And he did some damage against the Diamonds this year. Tell you a little bit more about that. The 2 1 pitch, swinging a ground ball right side. BJ Gwynn charging gloves, flips to first in time for the out. Nice play by BJ Gwynn. There's BJ with some defense, contributed to the offense with a base hit in that last half inning. And here's another look at that 4 uh, 3 put out. So 
So Marcus Bradley came in to hit for Scott David. And he promptly grounds out four to three. As Dakota Freeze picks up for Travis Blackley. So here's Metzger. Right-handed batter standing in, going against Dakota. And the pitch, and that is fouled back to the screen, and count nothing in one. Well, Dakota made a few starts against the Diamonds. One on July the 7th. That was six innings, three earned. He got the win, and a 2 nothing win against the Diamonds July 2nd. That was in San Rafael. He went seven innings, no runs, gave up just three hits in that ball game. So there is one of his shutouts on the year. Is a pitch that's low for a ball. One ball and one strike. Well, the Diamonds, after losing Steyer Waltz a promotion, decided to go get Dakota. But uh, two starts, certainly not uh, as good as the Diamonds would have hoped. Here's the 1-1 pitch, and the pitch to Metzger is inside for a ball, and the count 2-1. and one. Diamonds baseball coming to you, Comcast 24, AT&T 99, streaming on the city of Pittsburgh's website, also on Mixler.com. 2-1 pitch, swung on, that's hit hard into right field. Bautista going over there, he can't get it. This one's gonna go to the wall. Metzger racing into second. Here comes the throw into second base, not nearly in time. And Brennan Metzger has got himself a two base hit. Well, here come the stoppers, trying to get right off the deck. Daniel Comstock, he will be next. There was Bautista racing back there. There's nothing he could do with that one. Metzger simply hit it too hard. So the Diamonds in that last half inning battle back, pick up three runs. And now another runner in scoring position here for the stoppers. They've had traffic all night long. Here's the pitch, and that one nearly hits Comstock, and he didn't know whether to duck or spin out of the way as that ball had some hook on it as it was coming towards him. Well, that's got to be a bad feeling. You know you have to get out of the way as we look at Takashi Miyoshi down there at third base. But uh, you know you have to get out of the way. You're just not sure which way to do so. Here's a pitch on the inside corner for a strike and the count one and one. So Comstock up there now, one on and one out. Masa Miyadero waits on deck. Here's the pitch, and that one is low for a ball. And they count two balls and a strike. The Diamonds have certainly gone through some of those stints where you bring in pitcher after pitcher, and they struggle to find the strike zone. And then they've gone through some of those stretches where everything's just working out well. Starting pitching doing well. You go to the bullpen. They do their job. The hitters... The offense is scoring runs. Here's the 2-1 pitch, and that one just does miss inside. But for the Diamonds, unfortunately, they hasn't been consistent enough here in 2017. And especially when you're trailing a team like the Stompers, who have gone through parts of the season where it se they seemingly just don't lose. And when I was doing a lot of those games with Scott McDonald, we would look at the out-of-town scoreboard as this one is up high for a ball, ball four. So Comstock is aboard. And uh, Scott and I were constantly checking our phones to see what was going on with the stoppers. And Diamonds, of course, were trailing them in the standings and were obviously hoping that the stoppers would stumble. And they just kept on winning. And really, the surprise of the second half has obviously been Vallejo. They seemingly have, seemingly have come out of nowhere. 
Told you about their first half record of 12 up, 27 down, finishing dead last three halves in a row, dating back to 2016. Now all of a sudden they're among the best in the league. Here's a pitch inside for a ball to Miyadera and the count one ball and no strikes. Masa Miyadera, the one that he did not handle behind third base in that last half and he helped to open the way for Pittsburgh's three run and to tie the game. There's a pitch in there for a strike. And the count goes one and one. Of course, that was off the, off the bat of Valdez. They scored it a base hit. But uh, probably one that Miyadera should have caught. But the Diamonds able to take advantage as they tie it up. Here's the pitch, and that one's up high for a ball. And they count two balls and a strike. So Dakota Freeze. Pitched himself into a bit of a jam here. Double and a walk so far. 2-1 pitch to Miyadera coming up with one down. Top half of the seventh inning in Pittsburgh. A hot, muggy night here in Pitt. And the pitch, and instead of turning a look back to second, Brandon Metzger returns to second base. Well. Inning started off with uh, Marcus Bradley pinch hitting for Scott David. Marcus was out four to three, double by Metzger. Here's the next pitch, and that one is inside for a ball to count three and one. Comstock walked, and Almasa Miaderas worked the count to three balls and one strike. Three one pitch way up high ball four. that one wasn't even close so in back to back walks following the Metzger double and uh, the bases are full of stompers and here comes Aaron Miles this is a very quick pace by Aaron and he is bringing the hook with him so that will be it for Dakota freeze not a good outing out of the bullpen for Dakota he does get one out but uh, the three base runners on the base pass right now belong to him. We have a pitching change here from Winter Chevrolet Stadium. We'll step aside and come back to Pittsburgh in just a moment. All right, the new pitcher for the Diamonds is Michael Gunn, the left-hander, as he comes out of the bullpen. And Michael has had a nice year for the Diamonds here in 2017. Five and four with a 450 ERA. Very respectable in the ERA, 15 games. He's made 12 starts, so not unfamiliar with the uh, bullpen assignment. 78 innings pitch, and here's a good number, 87 strikeouts in that span, 39 walks, 76 hits. So another one of these guys the Diamonds would really like to have back. Here's Yuki Yasuda now, bases loaded, just one out. Can't close the book on Dakota Freeze as he goes just a third of an inning. Fastball in there from the left-hander, and the count, no balls and a strike. There's some numbers on Yuki. So Blackley, six innings pitch, three runs, two earned. So far, a third of an inning for Dakota Freeze, and all three base runners out there, his responsibility. A 3-3 three, three tie, here's the pitch. Swing and a ground ball, right side. That's gonna go through for a base hit. One run is in. Here comes another run. The throw is high, the tag is made. Out at the plate. Comstock trying to score, and Bautista from right field guns him down. So Gerald Bautista with that arcing throw and it comes all the way through to Randazzo. Comstock trying to score the second run off that base hit. He is cut down. The runner is able to move up to second and third. It's going to be a base hit and an RBI for Yuki Yasuda. But uh, a nice play by Gerald Batista out there and right. And how about that? The cut down Comstock. It was trying to put up the put the stoppers up by two runs. So the stoppers do take the lead. That run is charged to Dakota Freeze. So Michael Gunn gives up the base hit, but does get an out on the play. 
And so far, one of his three inherited runners have scored. He's still got one there at third base. That one does would go on the ledger of Dakota Freeze, and there's Rendazzo able to keep that one from getting by. So, so far for Dakota, third of an inning. And he's yielded one run. Two down here in the inning, runners at second and third. Pitch to Lococo, and that one is in there, a strike in the count, one ball and one strike. Well, here's the line for the stoppers, four runs, eight hits, no errors for the Diamonds, three runs, four hits, a pair of miscues for Pittsburgh. But to Gerald Bautista just came up with a highlight reel play to throw out Comstock trying to score from second base on the base hit by Yuki Yasuda to right field. 1-1 one, one pitch, and that one just is in there for a strike, one and two. Danny Speck hesitated on that one, kind of looked to his left, then looked to his right and gave the strike signal. Oh, well, Lococo, a couple of ducks on the pond for him. Get it back to a three-run lead if he could get a base hit here. Yasuda runs pretty well at second base. Coco waits, here's the one-two pitch. Swung on, a little ground ball. And charging it short is Mello. He's got it with the bare hand, throws, it's not in time. Boy, you talk about bad luck. And the Diamonds have had a couple of these. Comstock's base hit, that scored two. Earlier in the ballgame, the first two runs of the ballgame wasn't hit very well. They got two runs out of that. And on this infield hit that a ball that was just trickling by the mound. Corey Mello did everything that he could do and really made a nice play, but uh, it was just not hit quite hard enough and hit in the right spot. And that's going to be an RBI base hit for Matt Lococo. Back to the top of the order here for Matt Hibbert. Two runs in, in the frame, both charged to the reliever, this one is low for a ball, the reliever Dakota Freeze. So close the book on Dakota, an inning, uh, one third of an inning, he gives up two runs. So Michael Gunn has inherited three runners, two of them have scored. Here's the pitch, swinging a chopper foul, wide of first, and the count goes to a ball and a strike. We've got the pitching log for Mike Gunn. Last time out, ended up uh, getting the loss. Diamonds lost the game four to nothing to the Pacifics August the 25th, but Mike sure had a good game. Seven innings pitch, three runs, just one earned on six hits. Previous to that, here against the Pacifics, August the 19th, he got the win, seven innings, one run. Diamonds won the ball game three to one. Here's the pitch, and that's high for a ball. So he has had, been a guy that's uh, put together some good starts. Last start against the Stompers that he made, August the 13th, up in the wine country, not so good. Eight earned in six and a third, he took the loss. Diamonds were dumped nine to four. He's pitching pretty well here. He's given up a base hit. His pitch is outside for a ball. Did get some help from Bautista, who threw out a run, a runner at uh, home plate when Comstock was trying to score from second. And then he induced a little bleeder off the bat of Matt Lococo that turned into an RBI infield base hit. Swing, and this one hit into center field. Wes Wallace coming over to right center. He's there, and he reaches up, makes the catch. The inning is over, but the stopper's able to get a couple of runs back. Yuki Asuda, an RBI base hit, and an RBI infield base hit for Matt Lococo doing the damage. We'll go now to the bottom of the seventh inning. Diamonds trail it by two. It's stoppers five, Pittsburgh three.
Here's Joseph Rendazzo now to lead it off as we head to the bottom half of the seventh inning. Seventh inning stretch time here in Pittsburgh. Diamond's trailing it by two. They trailed today as many as three. And Scott Plaza still on the mound here for the stoppers. And the pitch, and that one is in there for a strike to Joe Rendazzo. And the count, no balls and one strike. Some defensive changes. Matt Lococo has gone from right field to first base. Scott David out of the game. Here's a swing and a foul ball as Rendazzo breaks his bat. So he'll go get some new lumber. Lococo goes from right to first base. Marcus Bradley comes into the ball game. And now he is in right field. A new bat here for Rendazzo. So just as the Diamonds tie the ball game at three, the Stompers come back with two runs in uh, their half of the seventh, and they lead it now five to three. <laughs> Check the out of town scoreboard. A nine to three lead for Vallejo in San Rafael, and they have gone to the seventh there. So Vallejo well on their way to a victory. Of course, Vallejo winning last night seven to three. Dave Dinelli ended up getting the win for the Admirals as he went six innings, six hits, two earned runs. Max Beatty for San Rafael. Well, Max took the loss, four innings, six hits, five runs, four earned, seven K. Swinging a ground ball right side. Yuki Suda has it, spins, fires the first in time for the out. Second very good play for Yuki Yasuda. That was a nice play going to his left. The one earlier in the ball game when he went behind the bag at second base, backhanded the ball, and then threw out Bautista at first base. That was a great play. So the Stompers continue to show us why they are the defending Pacific Association champions. Make no mistake about that. They have played a fantastic series here in Pittsburgh in the last three games for the 2017 campaign. Here's a pitch in there for a strike. And up to J.J. Wagner. So Rendazzo took over at catcher and ended up hitting in Marta Carena's spot here in the seventh. And this one is roll foul. So here's J.J. Wagner, a couple of strikeouts in the ball game, leading off the third and then one more in the fifth. Diamonds again trying to get off the deck. They were down three to nothing. Looking a bit listless, but came up with three runs to tie it in the sixth. There's the pitch swinging a foul back up and over the screen and out of play. So last night in Vallejo, Dinelli the win, Beatty the loss. One of the newer admirals came on and has been a big part of the second half for Vallejo. Quentin Rohrbaugh, the second baseman, homered yesterday. Picked up three RBIs with that shot. This one swung on and missed by Wagner and the toss down to first base in time as Wagner, well he's pulled the hat trick tonight. He struck out now three times. So Rendazzo grounds out to second. Wagner strikes out. And here comes Kevin Farley 0 for two tonight. Grounded out to the shortstop in the third, flew out to Right, leading off the sixth. And listen to his walk-up music if you can't hear it. It's Eric Bird and the Animals with House of the Rising Sun. Here's the pitch, and that one inside for a ball. Don't find too many of these young guys that uh, like that old rock music from back in the day. Usually reserved for well, guys like me. Over 40, here's the 1-0 pitch, and that one is in there, a strike. And I'm forgetting who it is, but uh, it was one of the San Rafael players. Walk up music, Ozzy, Os Ozzy Osbourne and over the mountain. Here's the 1-1 pitch, swinging a foul, swing back to the screen, and the count goes one and two. I always figured all these guys were into rap music now, but apparently not. One ball, two strikes to Kevin Farley. Nobody aboard, two down. We're in the seventh inning. Diamonds trail it by two. Scott Plaza has gone all the way so far. This one way outside for a ball. 
all the way so far for the stompers. Two balls, two strikes. Farley holding that bat very low. Here's the pitch to him now, swinging hammers. This one foul right side, that'll get out of play. So nobody throwing in the diamond bullpen and here with Mike Gunn and really a starter and a guy that, uh, well, he can give you multiple innings if you need it. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Outside ball three, three and two. Corey Mello would be next. Has a long look in at Comstock. Now they come set. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Swung on and missed strike three. Farley goes down. A 1-2-3 inning for Scott Plaza and the Stompers as we go to the eighth inning now. Stompers five, Diamonds three. All right, here's Derek Fox to lead it off. Another inning for Michael Gunn. Gunn inherited three, allowed two to score. Didn't give up any runs of his own and kind of the victim of a bad break. And the pitch, and that's in there for a strike. He made a pitch that he certainly wanted to make, got the results. Well, a weakly hit ball to shortstop, that, that's the result he wanted. Unfortunately, it was so weakly hit, the Diamonds were not able to make the play. No balls, one strike here to Fox, and the pitch to Derek in there. A strike and the count, nothing in two. So last night, Sonoma winning that one seven to one. Taylor Thurbert, six and two thirds for the Stoppers yesterday. Three hits, just one earned run and five strikeouts. This pitch is way up high on the count one and two. Sam Agnew wheeling ended up taking the loss. He was pressed into service when uh, Blackley ended up in Sonoma instead of here at Pittsburgh. Two innings pitch, six hits, four earned runs, four walks for Sam. Not a particularly good outing for him. Here's the pitch and a breaking ball swung on and missed strike three. Good looking pitch by Michael Gunn to strike out Derek Fox. Well, that's how the eighth inning starts out. And Fox the strikeout victim and here's Daniel Baptista. And Baps picked up for Carranza. That was in the sixth. And uh, Travis Blackley probably struck him out. So it's been Scott Plaza all the way for the Stompers, Blackley, Freeze, and now Michael Gunn for Pittsburgh. Here is the pitch, and that one's outside for a ball. And Baptista had the count, one ball with no strikes. Marcus Bradley would be next. He came on for Scott David. Extended batter waits, big swing and a miss, and Michael Gunn able to throw that one down low and right past Baptista. No problem with the velocity on Michael Gunn tonight. And a very good season here for Pittsburgh. And the 1-1 pitch and swing and a foul. That one get over the screen of the count, one and two. Another one of those guys the Diamonds would certainly love to have back. And uh, the ball ends up getting stuck in the backstop right near the top of that uh, fencing over there. <laughs> Get a good look at it right there between the backstop and the overhang, and it just sticks. No telling how long that'll stay there. The 1 2 pitch outside, ball two, two balls and two strikes. It was nine to three, but uh, San Rafael ended up putting up another run. I believe it's nine to four now in favor of Vallejo. So the Admiral's still in good shape out there in Marin County. 2-2 Two -two pitch and that check swing, that ball gets away. They're gonna appeal and they're gonna say that is a swing. They throw the ball down to first to complete the strikeout as the ball got away from Rendazzo. So Bautista rung up by the field umpire, Mark Beller. So he is a strikeout victim. Back-to-back -back strikeouts here for Michael Gunn. Here comes Marcus Bradley now. now 
top half of the eighth inning. Diamonds just trail by two. It looks like the Admirals are gonna win that game in San Rafael, but uh, still have a couple of innings to go, so you never know. And the pitch is a strike here to Bradley. Just assuming that they do. And if they win, they're in. There will be a championship game no matter what happens here. Here's the pitch to Bradley, and that one gets away, and the count goes to a ball and a strike. But if San Rafael was able to come back and win that game, and the stoppers hold on, they would be the champions, and they would be celebrating right here on the field in Pittsburgh, and the Diamonds certainly don't want to see that. 1-1 one, one pitch to Bradley, and that one is low, and the count two balls and a strike. So a better head-to-head -head record for Vallejo against Sonoma here in the second half. So a tie means that, well, they win the second half and they're in the championship game. That will be played in Sonoma. That will be tomorrow night. The pitch is low for a ball. If San Rafael comes back and wins that ball game, however, and the Stompers hang on to this one, no title game for the second year in a row. Three balls, one strike to Marcus Bradley, two down. Gun winds, kicks, fires, swing, and here's a chopper up the middle, and Gwynn giving chase. He's got it from behind the back, throws the first, not in time. Bradley simply runs too fast, and the Stompers have had a number of those today. Ball's not hit particularly well, but uh, in the right spots. And B.J. Gwynn doing all he can do with that jump throw and then falling over and doing the backward somersault. Well, B.J. Gwynn not only can hit, but he's quite a gymnast as well. All right, here's Metzger. One on and two down as the ending stays alive as Bradley picks up the infield hit. Double for Metzger his last time. He's also got a walk, and Brennan takes inside for a ball. Two-run lead for the Stompers. Two outs here in the inning. You got Metzger up there right now. Marcus Bradley does have pretty good speed. Not a bad situation for a steal. Kind of looking at the risk-reward factor. If he makes it, then you got a runner in scoring position for Metzger. If he's thrown out, then you, know, you start the next inning with Brennan Metzger. Not a bad deal. There's a pitch that's low for a ball. Bradley getting down that line quite a bit as Rendazzo had to find the baseball. It was a good look. Galetti holding the runner on there is a pitch that is just misses. Three balls and no strikes. Michael Gunn certainly doesn't want to walk Metzger here and give Comstock a chance with a runner in scoring position. You figure he'd go after Metzger here with fastballs in the zone. There's the pitch. Fastball in there, a strike, and the count three and one. And the last thing the Diamonds want to see is a runner in scoring position and give the Stompers a chance to put another run on the board with a base hit. So you figure Metzger is going to see good pitches to hit here the rest of the at-bat. Here's the pitch, and that's just misses off the inside part of the plate. And that is a walk following the infield base hit. So here comes Daniel Comstock. Couple of walks, two RBI base hit. And then he was caught stealing as he was picked off by Travis Blackley. That came back in the third. So I had a couple of RBIs to Comstock's total. 22 now on the year for Daniel. Stoppers 10 hits here tonight. But uh, unlike last night, this a very exciting and competitive baseball game. Here's the pitch, and that is in there, a strike, and the count nothing and one. 
The gun trying to get the Diamonds back into the dugout here, trailing by no more than two. A couple of innings left in the 2017 campaign for the Diamonds. Trying to pick up another victory. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss and the count, nothing and two to Comstock. Michael Gunn, certainly one of those guys with a live arm. Runners at first and second. Two on, two out. The 0-2 pitch, swung on and missed strike three. And Michael Gunn picks up another strikeout. He actually strikes out the side here in the inning as he gets Baptista, Marcus Bradley, and now Comstock. And the Stompers leave two to the bottom of the eighth we go. It's 5-3 Stompers. All right, new pitcher into the ball game is going to be Logan Gillespie, signed with the Stompers August the 12th after appearing in both the American Association and the Pecos League in his first season of professional baseball. Finished with a 2-3-5 ERA, 23 innings pitched with the Monterey Amberjacks of the Pecos League. Gillespie finished with 30 strikeouts in those innings and walked only seven batters on the season. Made three appearances with the Salina Stockade of the American Association before joining the Stompers. Pitched at Oxnard, Oxnard College for two seasons from 2016 through 2017. So he's in the ball game now as the Game heads to the eighth inning. Here's Joe Mello to lead it off, and Gillespie's first pitch is low for a ball. One ball and no strikes. And if that uh, last name Gillespie familiar to you, Pacific Association fans, of course, Brent Gillespie, who played so very well for San Rafael this year, picked up 18 home runs, as a matter of fact. Here's the 1-0 pitch, and that's in there for a strike before Brent was promoted himself. So a number of guys coming out of the Pacific Association getting the calls and moving upward and to all of them, we wish them the best in their future endeavors. Here is a ground ball to third, handled over there by the shortstop. Brother Derek Fox who throws him out, one up and one down. As Mello is cut down six to three, to the top of the order we go, and it's Odomar Valdez. So there are the numbers for Logan. Two and oh, a 122 ERA so far. Seven and a third innings pitched, five hits, seven walks. Nine strikeouts. And uh, his last outing it was August the 27th against the Admirals. Sonoma won that game six to four. And Logan, an inning in two thirds, just one hit, no runs. And a big swing and a miss there. So making himself a part of this uh, ball club and their run to a championship. That uh, last look, Admirals nine. San Rafael four in Marin County. Here's the 0-1 pitch to Odomar. Swings right through a fastball on the count. Nothing and two with B.J. Gwynn waiting on deck. Time running out here for the Diamonds. The 0-2 pitch. Swung on and missed strike three. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night to Odomar Valdez as he is out on three pitches. So that is Odomar's fourth at bat. He does have a base hit tonight, so he's one for four on the evening as he strikes out here. And that might be the last at bat for Odomar Valdez for the season and maybe as a diamond. We just don't know who's coming back next year. Is the pitch to win inside for a ball. And they count one ball with no strikes. I mean, you look around some of these teams and there certainly are players that are here several years in a row, so that's not completely unusual. But uh, what you also see is these teams continue to turn over. Here's the pitch, and that one is inside for a ball. Two balls and no strikes. Well, Vallejo has really opened things up now. It's 12 to four as they've gone to the eighth. Vallejo 12, the Admirals 
leading now by eight runs. Here's one popped in the air, left field, coming over toward the line and just in fair territory to make the catch is the left fielder Metzger. And that ends the bottom of the eighth inning. So we'll go to the top of the ninth. Sonoma continues to lead Pittsburgh 5-3 stoppers. New pitcher into the ball game for the Diamonds. Joe Mello will take over for Mike Gunn. As Mike Gunn inherited three runners. He allowed two to score. Pitched an inning in two thirds. Actually a pretty good outing for him. And uh, unfortunately, one of those, that little bleeder to shortstop that allowed a run to score. And it's that old Pat Travers song. It uh, shows if it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Well, the Diamonds had some of that uh, that kind of luck, even though the Stompers have played great baseball and you can't take anything away from them. They have showed us why they are the defending champions and uh, the team that uh, could very well be champions again. They have played fantastic baseball, but there have been a few balls that have fallen in or trickled to an infielder. The Diamonds have just not been able to turn into outs. And that's just the way it goes. So Joe Mello will take over now. Fourth pitcher used here by the Diamonds. It's been Blackley, Dakota Freeze, Mike Gunn. And now Joe Mello, the right-hander, and for the stopper, Scott Plaza and Logan Gillespie. And for Scott Plaza, right now in line for the win. Seven innings pitched, three runs, and he gave up four hits. Here's Masamiya Dara to lead it off as we head to the ninth inning. And the pitch to Miyadera is in there for a strike and the count nothing and one. So the stopper is able to take two out of three in the previous series as we look at Mello's numbers. 964 on the earned run average, nine and a third innings pitched, 12 hits, 13 walks. Well, one pitch, here it is, and that one hops up there. Back to the screen it goes, and the count of ball and a strike. They needed to take that series to get even against Vallejo. They were able to do that. And then, of course, they had to, as it turns out, it looks like they're going to have to win all the games to stay tied with Vallejo, but a tie won't do them any good. It's will force the championship game, swinging a ground ball to third. Picked over nicely over there at third base. The throw is high, pulled down by Vinny Galetti. Nice play on both ends as Wagner able to make the play there and good stretch going vertical for Vinny Galetti to record out number one. So here's Yuki Yasuda. And the reason, of course, the championship game is it looks like it's going to be played tomorrow. And the reason it's going to be at Sonoma is because the overall, the best overall record between the two clubs belongs to the Stompers. Here's a pitch in there for a strike. And of course, Stompers winning that first half. And the Admirals, well, they were just terrible in that uh, first half. So the Stompers will be in friendly territory tomorrow to defend their championship swing. And this one's a little looper over the head of the third baseman, Wagner. That actually was hit pretty hard. And Yuki Asuda's got himself another base hit tonight. That's a couple of hits for Yuki. He's also hit by a pitch, stole a base as a sacrifice bunt. So Yasuda, a pretty good night at the plate. Also made a couple of really nice plays in the field. It, Second base tonight as well. Here's Matt Lococo now, the ninth place hitter. So the Stoppers going for the sweep here against Pittsburgh. Diamonds just three outs remaining. In the ball game, in the series, and in the season. You see what a pretty big lead over there at first base. Let's see if he wants to run. It's a two run ball game right now. The Diamonds well within striking distance. Here's the pitch to Lococo. In there, a strike, and the count nothing in two. Some of these guys like Joe Mello, like Corey Mello, JJ Wagner. 
Joe Rendazzo, all these guys right now auditioning, auditioning for jobs for next season. Left-handed batter waits. The 0-2 pitch, swung on and missed strike three. So Melo picks up the strikeout as Lococo is down for out number two. And we'll go back to the top of the order for Matt Hibbert. Just kind of figure in this situation that uh, Yasuda would try to run here. Two run lead in the top of the ninth. Figure you're playing with house money. And there he goes, here's the pitch, that's low. And uh, unable to come up with it cleanly was Renjazo as that ball hit the dirt before it got to home plate. And Yuki Yasuda has got himself his second stolen base of the night. So Yasuda steals second base and Matt Hibbert a chance to drive him in. Here's the pitch and a breaking ball in there for a strike and the count one and one. That was a nice pitch by Mello as it kind of started. I think it was gonna be in on the fists to Hibbert and then kind of broke away from the right-handed batter and just did catch the inside part of the plate. One ball and one strike as Delta TV gets a nice look there at uh, Joe Mello, the diamond right-handed reliever. 1-1, one, one, swing at a high fastball and a miss, count one and two. And Joe Mello starting at the ninth inning here. Gotten Niadera to start the inning. Yasuda got a base hit. He then stole second base, struck out Lococo. And now he's ahead of Matt Hibbert here. One ball and two strikes. One, two pitch, there goes the runner, swinging a ground ball to short. Picked up out there, juggled, recovered by Corey Mello, throws the first in time for the out. So a nice play by Corey Mello at short, stayed with that nicely to get the 6-3 put out. Stoppers done here in the top of the ninth after eight and a half as we head to the bottom of the ninth inning. It's the Stoppers five and the Diamonds three. Entering the game for Sonoma. All right, here we go to the bottom of the night. Last chance for the Diamonds. And it'll be a new pitcher on the mound for the Sonoma Stoppers. And it'll be Jacob Cox, the right-hander. And he'll face Vinny Galetti. What a great season for Vinny. Could very well be the MVP. Jake Taylor also in that hunt, but San Rafael, well, they've been the worst team in the league this year. We figure it's gonna be Vinny or Tillman Pugh of the Admirals, who's been fantastic. And Vinny, and the pitch to him, and that is outside for a ball. Clearly, the he'll win the batting title in the association this year. Has a chance to win the RBI title as well. 1-0 pitch to Vitti. Cox winds and fires, and here it is. Swung on and fouled back to the screen. And the count one and one. And what looks to be, or very well could be, Vinny's last at bat of the 2017 campaign. And you never know, maybe the last at bat in a Diamonds uniform. So Jacob Cox takes over. He's the third pitcher used by Miyoshi. At a CSU Monterey Bay, 6'5", 215 pounder. He comes in with some good numbers as well. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch to Vinny. Big swing and a miss at a fastball. He doesn't get it, it's one and two. For Jacob, five and four on the season. A very good ERA and an even three. 28 games all in relief. He's picked up five saves, 36 innings pitched, 36 strikeouts, 20 walks and 30 hits. 
There you see him, and the one-two pitch, and swung on, that ball is laced into left field. That's gonna be a base hit for Vinny Galletti. So here comes Wes Wallace now, representing the potential tying run. So the Diamonds not willing to go quietly into this good night, and not quite ready for the 2017 campaign to be over. Some of the fans standing up here. Well, I'm just calling Vinny Galletti has just broke the single season hit record for the Pacific Association and congratulations to him. And you talk about a feather in his cap and uh, one more thing on the ledger that says he's the MVP, well that's it. So Vinny Galletti picking up yet another hit, second hit of the night. And here's Wes Wallace representing the tying run now. Jacob Cox, the pitch, swing and a miss. And the count, no balls and one strike. For Jacob, entering his second season as a professional and second in Sonoma. Finished with a 2-0 record, a .96 ERA and nine and a third innings out of the bullpen in 2016. Yeah, this one is a strike. And that makes it nothing in two. Here's Wes Wallace, no balls and two strikes. And Eagle Eddie up board at first base. And the pitch, and that one hops up there for a ball. One ball and two strikes. Gerald Bautista would be next. So Vinny Galetti. And the pitch, and that is just does miss the count two and two. So Vinny coming in with 103 hits, picking up two more, 105 to break the single season hit mark. Congratulations to Vinny Galetti. Here's a two two swing and a foul back, and the count stays at two balls and two strikes. Stoppers five, Diamonds three, 11 hits for Sonoma, five for Pittsburgh. 2-2 two -two pitch from Cox and swung on and missed strike three. Ball gets away, but first base is occupied. So no reason to throw the ball down to the first base bag. West Ball is a strikeout victim. And uh, for West, his third strikeout of the ball game as he was over the century mark in that category. So here's Gerald Batista representing the tying run. Time is not done yet. Cox's pitch, and this one just does miss, and the count goes to one ball with no strikes. Such a good game here and an exciting finish. I kind of hate to mention that it might not matter <laughs> because. Vallejo winning big against San Rafael, and it's late in the ball game out in Marin County. Here's the pitch, and that one is low, gets away. There goes Vinny. He'll take second base. So, of course, Vinny's run doesn't matter right now as he is not the tying run, but at least you take away the potential for a ground ball double play. Two balls and no strikes here to Gerald Bautista. You got first base open, but you never want to let the potential tying run get on base. Here's a 2-0, and that one just does miss the outside part. They count three balls and no strikes. How do the stompers want to play this one? Carol Bautista has extra base pop. 3-0 pitch to him, and that's in there for a strike. A get it over fastball, and the count three and one. Right. 
Here's the pitch, swinging a foul back to the screen of the count, three and two. Gerald Bautista, Jacob Cox in a battle here. Got first base open, so you don't necessarily have to groove one to him, but like I said, you just hate to put that potential tying run on base. Got to figure you're going to challenge Bautista here. 3 2 pitch, swung on, popped up right side. That one is going to drift out of play. And the count remains at 3 and 2. So the Diamonds trying to finish 2017 in style with a comeback victory here in the ninth inning. Uh. Trying to end a, what has been an eight game losing streak, a real tailspin to finish the campaign. Trying to get off the snide with that. The three two pitch swung on ground ball. That's into left field, a base hit. Vinny Galetti gonna stop at third base. And now runners at the corners. With one out, so Gerald Bautista hit that one hard. And able to get that one through the infield for the base hit. Here's Zach Rapaz now coming up to hit. Runners at the corners for Zach. We had Joe Randazzo showed up there, but this is Randazzo's number six. Rapaz number eight. And he stands in and he'll bat right now no pinch hit so Rapaz now represents the winning run here here's Comstock going through the signs with Jacob Cox Plaza Gillespie Jacob Cox used for the stompers Lockley Freeze Michael Gunn used for the diamonds along with Joe Mello There's this pitch is in there for a strike and the count nothing and one. Diamonds at the corners. Bautista representing the tying run being held on there at first base. Here's the pitch and that one is a check swing. Do they go? They're going to appeal. No swing. And the count goes to a ball and a strike. So this has been Diamonds Baseball here in 2017. The last few games have not clearly represented this team. And uh, the way they have played this season, here's the pitch and that's outside for a ball. And they count two balls and one strike to Rupaz. Here's Zach Rapaz with his numbers. Very limited action for Zach, just uh, being out of the team not so long ago. The 2 1 pitch broken back right back to the pitcher who's got it. Throws to first. It's a double play to end the game. And the now they seem to hold on a second. And they're going to say, Is that catcher's interference? The bat exploded. And I think the call was catcher's interference. So the game that looked like it was over is not. <laughs> and Rapaz is going to be awarded first base. So a strange turn of events here. It looked like a line drive and an out and a throw back to first base to end the ball game and the season for the Diamonds. And instead, we're going to have a pitching change. So we're going to have a new pitcher into the ball game for the Stompers. We'll take time out. And we'll be back to Winter Chevrolet Stadium in just a moment. Now batting. So a very Entering strange turn of events. Looked like it's this game was nine. over well, on a line drive and throw back the first double play. Instead, base is loaded and now here's batting. the right-handed pitcher Juan Espinosa to take over seven. for Jace. Jacob Cox. Jace. Six and four, 335 earned run average, 91 in the third innings pitch. 79 hits, 27 bases on balls, 90 strikeouts. And the pitch, and that is low for a ball. In the count, one ball and no strikes. So with Zach Rapaz up there, it looked like he had lined into an inning ending, game ending, season ending double play. Instead, catcher's interference keeps it alive. 
And the Diamond's a base hit away from tying this one up. Here's the pitch to Wagner, swings and misses in the count, one ball and one strike. And the bugs are starting to fly in all of a sudden. I think that was a cricket. God, I haven't seen one of those in years. There's a pitch in there for a strike in the count, one and two. It is a hot, muggy night here in Pittsburgh. This is a time where you start seeing those bugs. One-two pitch, here it is, swung on, a little looper, that's gonna be a base hit! One run is in, here comes Bautista around third, here comes the throw, and Bautista back to third base, and the Diamonds have cut the lead to one. Well, how about that? J.J. Wagner didn't get a whole lot of it, but he got enough of it to get it over the first baseman's head and pick himself up an RBI, and just like that, it's five to four. Now batting the left fielder, number 18, Kevin Farley. So here's Kevin Farley now, and the Diamonds a bait lit away from winning this ball game. So a quick talk out on the mound with Juan Espinosa and Daniel Comstock. Oh boy. What an exciting ball game. Diamonds look like they were done. Now it looks like they have a chance to win it. The potential tying run just 90 feet away. And now at second base, the potential winning run standing out there. Here's the pitch, and that one is in there, a strike in the count, nothing in one. So Kevin Farley now, chance to be a hero to finish this ball game. Boy, a lot of fans still left here tonight. Enjoying this one thoroughly. The 0 1 pitch. Here it is. And that one is on the outside corner. A strike, and it's nothing in two. No balls and two strikes to Farley. Corey Mello, left handed batter, waits on deck. Nobody warming in the stopper pen. So it looks like the Diamonds would get the righty lefty matchup next if Farley does not hit into a double play. 0-2 pitch, swing, and that one is just fouled off. And Farley had to reach out just to get a piece of that one, but he stays alive and it's 0-2. And, no balls and two strikes to Kevin Farley. Bases full of diamonds, one in. They trail it now five to four in a game that looks like, looked like it was over. 0-2 pitch, and that one is low, ball one, one and two. Well, you can't give up the walk of your Espinosa, that would tie the ball game. Well, you figure Kevin Farley's gonna see something good to hit. And I'm seeing something good to eat, but uh, tough to take those bites in between pitches. Can I chew fast enough to get it swallowed before the next pitch? Here's a check swing, and they're gonna appeal down at uh, the uh, field umpire, Mark Beller, and he did not give a signal. But uh, now they appeal again, and Mark Beller still has not given a signal. He's waiting for Danny Speck. Check that. Check that. And now they're calling a strike three, and they're not gonna appeal it. So Danny Speck just says that was strike three. He did not even ask for the appeal. Boy, that was close. That was very close there. Danny Speck thinks he went around. The ball certainly looked like it was out of the strike zone. So Espinosa picks up the strikeout. The Diamonds down to their last at bat here maybe of the season. But to Corey Mello trying to pick up a base hit and give the Diamonds a win. Here's the pitch to Corey and that floats in there for a strike and it's nothing in one. We've had so many of these types of games with the Diamonds. Very exciting, close baseball. Well played, flowing right through. We're having one here to finish the season. Very nice to see. The 0 1 pitch, and that is low for a ball. The count one ball and one strike. Come on, 
Dory Mello looking for his first hit of the night. 0 for 2 with a walk so far. Left-handed batter. Kind of windmilling that back, that bat around. A 1-1 pitch to Corey, swinging a ground ball to short. Fox has got it. Goes the short way to the second. The ball game is over. The season is over for the Diamonds. And it looks for all intents and purposes that the Stompers will be playing tomorrow night. We'll check that score for you here in just a moment. There's a final score here from Pittsburgh. Sonoma wins it by a final of 5-4. to four. They sweep the series against the Diamonds. And what can you say? They really looked great in this series. The Diamonds fought very hard in this final game and made it very exciting indeed, but they do come up one run short. Travis Blackley, you now he went six innings, gave up three runs, two earned. Dakota Freeze again went a uh, third of an inning, gave up two runs. Dakota actually gonna get charged with the loss. And uh, Scott Plaza giving up three runs and in seven innings, four hits, he gets the win. So that will do it. And last check, they're still going out there in San Rafael, but it's a big eight-run lead for Vallejo. So it looks like if Vallejo holds on and wins that game, there will be a championship game tomorrow. So check that out. That game will be in Sonoma. If Vallejo does hold on to win, and we will have a title game here to finish off the 2017 campaign in the Pacific Association. And I just want to say to... Uh, all the Pittsburgh Diamonds and their fans. It's been a pleasure to call the games here this year and uh, hope to see a lot of these current Diamonds back in uniform in 2018. For the ones that won't be here, we'll say goodbye and uh, we certainly hope you hope for the best for you in your future endeavors. And that'll do it here for Diamonds Baseball. For all of us here with the Pittsburgh Diamonds, I'm Anthony Schultz saying good night from Winter Chevrolet Stadium. <laughs>